And an invisible girl, I don't know. If she really wanted to, she can go Assassin's Creed, pop up behind someone, just stab them in the back, right? Like, <laughs> if she really I mean, wanted to. Right? If, if Class A really wanted to, they easily had to fight in the back in all the matches. But because they're they're heroes and they're trying to like subdue their opponent, while Class B is just saying, you know, fuck it, I'm going in, I'm going for the win. Like it, it's it's not fair. So the invisible girl just needs to come in with the invisible bat. What's up, everyone? Uh, Welcome yeah. to the Anime Isekai Podcast, week five of the spring 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hello! Except we have Ku. Yo, yo. Except we have Taylor. Hello! And finally, we have Justin. Hey, guys. All right. Uh, so, quite a bit of anime news to go through real quick. We got the Dragon Ball Super movie coming 2022. So. <sighs> So I know Brian's hyped. super hyped for so it. Yeah. It's just, it's just more fun trash. Hey, hey, if anything like Broly was, I- I'm in. Broly I mean, it's it's time. really fun to watch, but it's, I mean, it's. I How Actually, dare you say that? All right, Broly was fine. The movie was, the, uh, the music was just awful. You don't want to hear him say Broly over and over again nah, for two hours. I, I, I don't. I don't need any more uh, Dragon Ball Z rap. I'm, I'm I honestly good. completely forgot about that, but now all those memories <laughs> yeah. just came rushing yeah, back that in. Was, that was the first Th- thing thanks, I think we thanks all for thought. that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go man. without I'm, remembering that. I'm here. Cultured swine. That's what <laughs> you are. I'm, actually, I'm curious right. to see how it'll do in the theaters for yeah, uh, box fine. office because Broly made $30 million and then uh, Demon Slayer just did like about 40 So I don't know if it's going to reach that level or if it's no. uh be around I, Broly. Part, I don't think it is just because of the fact that it had broly, broly. <laughs> coming canon so that definitely drew in a lot of fans to go see it like i can't think of any other character or event that would cause people to, to rush out and see it in theaters yes I, I just assume like the popular dvz like if it's gotta be something like i don't know gotta count for something but we'll see no yeah. we, we, we'll yeah. we also got overlord season four an anime movie, so um, I have no idea what the anime movie is about. It's about like the Holy Kingdom arc. I don't know. If that's, I don't know if that's canon. <laughs> is or that not. canon or? Uh, oh, never mind then. I don't know. I don't know. I just, oh. They just say Holy Kingdom arc, so I don't know. I mean, about if they're the smart, they'll make it canon. But yeah, yeah. I just assume when they announced like the season and the the movie, I was like, well, compilation before the season or some shit. Like that. Oh, those are the worst. Th- that's what you get oh. for not reading the article, sir. I don't know what I'm gonna think about this stuff because I didn't really care much for the third season. Uh, when when I yeah, turned like, super I'm, evil, I'm honest. dude. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like yeah, it's definitely like second season was my favorite. Third season, I I don't know even what to think. I, I just I I, I didn't I started not liking uh um what the hell is his name? His name. Yeah, I, I, like I started losing. I started not liking Ains. It's like almost like his people around him is be- or some of them are becoming more human while he's like losing that aspect. Hmm. And I don't uh, know. Yeah. I really don't know uh, how an ongoing series or manga finish. I don't. Okay. I don't know. Well, it's a light novel. Or light novel finish. I don't know. Oh, did it finish? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there was like a notice like uh, last year it finished. Hmm. But I I can check. I was gonna say it's crazy. A season four because we we never get season fours ever. It's already season three. So I I remember the day, David, when you said it wasn't even gonna get a second season. (laughs) Yeah. They should have stopped that. And here season. we are. Yeah, Let's no. be honest. Actually, I, I was. I think all of us were excited for the third season, and then I, we I, watched it. I'm pretty no. sure. It's, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's because it's it's produced by Kadokawa, and they're pushing hard for anime adaptations. So that's also the other yeah. thing. Like the Kadokawa press release or press release said they're going to do 40 anime per year, up from 33. That's insane. So uh, I lied. It's still going. Oh, so I'm going okay. Okay. Yeah. But, light, light novel's still going. Is it by Kadokawa? It's been going up for uh the the light novel? Yeah. Or the oh, anime. Um, Both. I don't see uh, I don't I actually have no idea. I uh, basically see the light novel. It's been going for fuck. Nine years. Yeah. Coming July. That's insane. Yeah, I it's Kadokawa. Yep. But it's enter brains. So it's like a division of That's Kata like Kata that's Kata. the uh yeah. Like that's the publishing um division that hosts the magazine Denki Bunko or Bunkyo. Oh, okay. 
So, yeah, I don't know. I'm still going to watch it, but, but yeah, we'll it's, it's because Katakawa, man. 40 animes per year. <laughs> Even though people say like there's already too much anime. I mean, at least it's a good as one. As long as the, the quality <laughs> doesn't diminish as a rating of that, uh, I'll take it. But yeah, I shouldn't say quality. One, quality definitely man. over quantity. Don't yes. be, you know, too greedy <laughs> now at the expense of not putting out good work. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then final news we got. I, I know we already had me and base season two announced, but we got the confirmation it's coming 2022. So there's that. And also a random game was announced. I don't think most of us are play it because we don't play these anime games. Is it mobile? No, it's an actual no, console, it's console game. It's gonna be a console game. Or like, yeah, PS4, Switch, PC. Yeah, it's like an action exploration so, RPG. So it's gonna be like Damachi with no budget. <laughs> I don't know. We don't we'll play. We don't play these games, so it's not it's not in our alley. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play Damachi, then it was but, but it you came didn't. out terrible. But you didn't. Yeah, so couldn't do it. I couldn't. It was so, just. I'm actually sort of interested in the Demon Slayer Cyber Connect Two game, but we'll see. The fighting one. We'll we'll see. Hmm. So. So that's it for the anime no, news. Really... <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. I was just gonna say, um, the guy that plays Tanjiro's or that does Tanjiro's voice always plays the Demon Slayer games that come out, so you could always watch oh his stream too. Just, I'm just, too. I'm just saying. That he too. gets really excited. He would play himself. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you? I don't know. Uh... Trust me. Like, if, if I had that character of me, there would be no other. Dude, like the I'd English play. voice actors play their own games too, so it's not that surprising. Oh no, I'm not, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm backing them up. Damn. All right. So that's going to be it for <laughs> anime news. Move on to our, our shows. Let's talk about our first show, Megalobox. Hmm. Punch me in the guts, Ren. I'm trying to. I just watched this today, too, but like, I sped through it. Okay. Uh, well, I'm... I'll. Oh, uh, if you don't remember, basically, we had the conclusion with, uh, with Joe and. Uh, because, uh, was it Sashio was supposed to fight in the ring because oh right right those, right those right. douchebags <laughs> like 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 fucked up fucked up their their restaurant and got the deed so Joe stepped in and basically rigged it so he can get the deed back and hey, it worked sounds like this is like <laughs> kind of like a conclusion to his comeback to the town I guess uh, so I I don't really know what what where it's got what direction it's going for the story like I don't know if Joe's gonna stay here or there's some unfinished business he has. Move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It's uh, hmm. I, dude, I don't know. Sachi, like, uh, some of the, that one kid that they kept talking. I I forgot like what the hell she was saying, but I was like, it was pissing me off. I'm thinking like where she just kept saying like I uh, oh fuck. I, I, mean, I wish I would have taken over. Right? There, she was saying how like she didn't really care that he wasn't that Joe wasn't there for pops, but she hated that she she thought he basically abandoned him and left. I mean, that was Sachio. <laughs> and then, yeah, he, then they said, like, Sachio said that. But then, like, she was saying, well, I don't, it doesn't matter if, like, if that Sachio caused it. Like, you shouldn't be the type of person to run away just because someone told you. What a bitch. But I kind of agree, too, Stren. <laughs> like, I don't, just the whole, like, people, everyone just, like, shitting on Joe for leaving. Like, I don't know. I don't, I feel like they're just lacking, like, like his side, the, his the empathy from his side. I, I feel like it's just putting too much, too much of the blame on him. Yeah. They don't really go get like what Joe, I guess, was going or feeling at the time, or like what his plan was. He's basically like desperate in a sense. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you know, and then I think also like he just ended up finding out like the news during the like during the fight. I didn't also know he was still fighting Gearless. I thought at that point he was, you know, wearing. I mean, he's still going with his name. It's you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was definitely interesting. I mean. It shouldn't be, I guess, you know, given his his moniker of Gearless Joe, but I definitely was expecting the use of um, Chief's Megalo gear. Yeah, that's I was thinking to go in a... with nothing. Yeah, I thought I was gonna bust that out while this dude's sitting there, like you know, firing out fire in the back of his gear. <laughs> 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 right. So, no, it's a very know. very good question of where they decide to take it next. Yeah, because if this was the conclusion of like his like comeback arc, it was definitely weak. Uh, just kind of like how it's more of like I just like a majority of those kids I just like hate now. Not not hate, but it's, I I don't care much for Sachio and then also that that girl that I mean I don't think any of us could have ever told that, that was going to be a girl. Uh, from before I don't know if I call comeback arc weak, but like it definitely wasn't as strong as the first arc with Chief. I don't know the ending. I was talking about the ending. I, yeah. yeah, like it's very well, strong. We don't know if it's really like the end. We don't know if he's still gonna be here or not. If he's still gonna make the comeback. 
Right. Because I think we were predicting that he was going to join the Megalo box tournament, but it doesn't seem that's viable now, or maybe maybe somehow he will do it as a comeback. So we just got to see. Yeah. I don't really know what his like driving motivations are from this point. Are you, are you still thinking? Are you still liking the show, Justin? Uh, yeah, I'm still liking it. Um, I think I'm interested still to see. I have to imagine they're going to bring back in the Edison Liu guy, uh, Yuri's. Oh, uh, and Yuri. Disciple, yeah. And yeah. Yuri. So um, I'm interested to see kind of what their roles will play, just given to your point, certain of how they kind of ended things off on this episode. It, mm-hmm. It's now just a question mark of, you know, how do we go? Where do we go from here? Yeah. So um, um, I, I don't have any doubt that I, that it'll still be good, but it just is something that I guess I wasn't expecting because I know last week, you know, I was like trying to theorize like, oh, you know, Joel will come back, start fighting again, maybe enter in, into the megalomania if that's, you know, still yeah. a common thing and do this route. But yeah, I don't know. Do you do you guys remember like at the at the end of the first season? Did, didn't they say like during some sort of time skip that Yuri died? Or was he only in a wheelchair? Mm, he was in a wheelchair. I yeah, thought. I remember the wheelchair, I remember, but I thought yeah. for some reason. I don't, but I, I don't think he died because, I mean, when they had the flashback in this episode with um, when Joe is fighting uh, Lou, they showed mm-hmm. Yuri there in his corner. Yeah. No, I meant like, um, I swear, like, I thought they said like eight years. It was like one of those like eight years later thing or something like that. And I thought for some reason, like Yuri was passed on or something. I don't remember but I know it's in five years, years, but still. I don't think so. I'll, but... I'll look it up. I'll look it up while, while you guys are talking about another show I don't watch. <laughs> but yeah i'm just like waiting for the ending for like i really give like my like what i really about yeah, this like, season so i think the endings have been important just like how the first season started out really strong and it just had a weak ending yeah so. yeah I, I really don't know what much more to say like i, I just like the kids just were pissing me besides the guy that owned the shop like I, like sacha just became a douche like that one chick just out of nowhere it's just like it's like who even are you and she's just uh, like just mad talking shit and it's just i don't know it's it's that's about that's all fair enough fair enough yeah i'm just gonna stop <laughs> no I get, I get what you're talking about like i just i just think yeah again i just think that everyone's unfairly putting on joe so. yeah oh yeah but hopefully we get there's some sort of clearing up with that uh, later on but yep yeah so that's all I, I got yeah i think we'll have to wait for later episodes to really like dive more into what's got going on in the story so, yeah, we'll I wish it. I would have taken notes. Yeah. No, that's all right. <laughs> no, it's all good. I think we literally had everything there. So, yeah, yeah. we'll be here for now for this week. We'll come back and see what changes next week. So, oh shit. And I also I forgot to do the thing at the bottom for Megalobox. Whoops. That's right. fine, man. That's it for Megalobox. First Megalobox. one. Shame. That's it for <laughs> Megalobox. We're in it there. Now I'm going to put it, the next one for our next show, Nagotoro San. All right, it is up. So, if you can see in the bottom right, it's there. Let's talk about my, nice. Nag- Nagotoro. Oh my goodness! All right, you know, you know how I said we should give like those friends of her a chance. Yeah, they got to go. <laughs> like I, oh my god, you just want to punch him in the uterus or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, how how are you guys liking the interaction so far with uh, the MC and Nagatoro? Because I'm I'm really liking how how the chemistry is, like how they play with each other and. Like they like each other, but they're too shy to admit it. And like even Nagatoro's starting to show like uh like her sensitive side in a sense whenever she teases Nag- Nagatoro now. So I feel like it's nicely fallen into place. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think they're cute as shit. <laughs> I I really like them a lot. And uh, I you're right. I don't like the friends at all. I feel like they would have been tolerable maybe if like they just didn't have like the same kind of like joke each week, which is that they mess with him. Nagatoro comes in, and she's pissed. They run off like. What's the point? I'm sick of it. It adds nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, if they actually had a point, then I could tolerate them, but they have none, so please get them out. Um, but yeah, there's not really that much to like talk about with it. It's just a really cute show. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. How are you like I it, David? Um, still the same. Like I, I still it's enjoyable. I guess it's enjoyable. Uh, no, like you guess. It's it's very like. <laughs> I don't know it's very like stuff like in the moment type of thing we have to appreciate just like them interacting there's no like like big ongoing thing that you have to look out for and mm. I kind of want more development from the guy just because like it feels like so much of the focus is on, is on Nakatoro so 
hope the guy like mm. changes, but usually they don't in these type of shows, so we'll see. It's always the girl. Sorry. It, it's always the they girl. Always yep. on the girl. It's always the girl. I, I mean, would hey. you blame them though? Because they put so much effort in like and money into her budget, like her character design. Like, why would you not focus on her, right? Mm, well, I don't know. I feel like he's actually improved just like a little bit. Like, I feel like each episode he improves just like the tiniest smidgen. You oh, know, yeah, he, did, he, he gets did. more used to you. Gets more used to her. Gets more used to her friends. Like, I can see him starting to have like a little bit of a yeah. Does he, have, does he have a lot of flaws? I thought it was mainly just like Nagatoro was supposed to be the one changing. Uh, I never had an issue with him, so I mean, I'll let you guys like, answer that. He's just you know uh, typical, typical. He's just a like, bitch, right, David? Yes. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Right? No, nah, I just remember David you, saying it from like the first episode. The first so. episode, man, he was like crying <laughs> because like he couldn't handle handle her. David, it's called a pushover, not a bitch. Okay. okay? Two completely different words, sir. All right. I hope you start uh, using no, that like, words for other characters that will. Right, but uh, but he's, he is definitely showing progression. Uh, he's definitely acting more of a as a as a guy who's like who's totally interested and he's willing to like take the extra steps to oh, go. Huge. Where before he didn't really care as much, or he just kind of let things happen. So he he definitely yeah he improved this episode, especially with the uh, when they were standing in line. And mm-hmm. like she was like dying from like heat exhaustion, and she like he took initiative, to take her out. So, so that was good mm-hmm. on him. So I like that. Yeah, that was a good uh, development for him. Is she still basically just like terrorizing the hell out of him? Honestly, like it's not even really that bad. Like it kind of just seems like they toned it down a lot season. compared to the first. Episode. Oh, did it? The first episode was brutal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first episode was pretty bad, and there was one episode, the one that you saw, Stratton, where she calls him a perv, just like over and over and over and over again. Yep. Um, and I'm not going to say that word doesn't still exist in the show, but oh it's it's toned down quite a bit. It was just that one episode where it was really bad. Like in this episode when she did it at the very end, um, when she like texted him that he was a perv. I actually thought that was kind of funny and I laughed. Yeah, it was actually uh, played pretty well uh, <laughs> yeah. compared to like the first time it was said and done. Uh, and like. You, I like how you can tell that he's starting to like her, even though he really hasn't given her very much indication at all. Because when they were standing in that line and the guys behind them were like checking her out because her bra was showing through her shirt, you know, oh. and he's just, he just goes and stands like in front of her so they can't see like that was cute. And I don't think that's something he would have done in the first episode, you know? Oh, no, definitely not. Yeah. Just taking more initiative to do things like mm-hmm. taking her hand and take her out of the line, uh, just kind of stand up to her friends where they're about to cut his hair in a sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, like saying, "Oh yeah, I promise her she can cut my hair." So that's where he got the courage to stamp to him, I guess. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely like progressing pretty well in terms of like character development. So uh, okay, yeah, that's up to the guy. But have we ever learned of his name? Because I still don't know what his name is. I just call oh, him MC. Some, it's, 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 yeah, because she just said she just called him oh, Senpai. Yeah. So it's like I never know. <laughs> yeah, there's so much of these What's shows where like, they is. never say the main character's name, so I never remember them. Yeah, I guess this is where a certain point will come in, right? Like, I guess the focus is all on Nagatoro side because we don't even know the entity's name. Yeah. So, does he even matter? Is he even a real person? You know? Point taken. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, really loving this episode. Uh, kind of hoping to see the uh, like the teasing how it how it goes on, and it looks like with each episode they're getting more and more intimate with each other. So, mm-hmm. we'll kind of see what happens. But yeah. yep. Yeah, good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it off there for Nagatoro. See what happens in the upcoming weeks. So we'll move on to our next show. Let's talk about I'm a Spire So What? Ooh. So <clears throat> my theories out the window. <laughs> There's no way in heck that this is going to be the Demon Lord. No, pro- um, no Prophet Coup. What happened? I guess not. I mean, they. It's 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 so weird because I I want to say yeah. maybe they were just debating us this whole time, right? With the thoughts or with the idea that Kumko does evolve to become the Demon Lord, but it looks like they're going in a slightly different way. Uh, yeah, it's almost like potential, like what mind control, kind of, with what we saw at the very end, with like one of the like separate mind bodies jumping on the Demon Lord at the end, or. Hmm. I don't know. Like the whole immortality thing, even from last episode, has kind of now thrown me a little bit for a loop of just, you know, what 
Kumiko can do with that ability. And I know in this episode, she even said like, oh, her immortality isn't really immortality if she was to come across the the demon lord again, because, you know, Mm -hmm. she would obviously have an idea of how to defeat that. But right. Yeah, I don't know. It definitely it it opens, you know, the theory crafting mills again of just like, what is going on here? (laughs) Like, you know, it's a it's you scratch your head once again. It's like you think you have things figured out and then it just, you know, opens up this new avenue and you're just like, oh, God damn. Like, where do we go from here? But in a good way, I think. No, no, it, it definitely is. Like, it kind of gives me more of a reason to keep watching and pay more attention. Uh, although the only thing that's really throwing me for a loop here is the fact that, uh, like, before, when they kind of cue in on her, on her monologue, uh, she does mention people's real names, the people who are reincarnated. So unless she's a reincarnated person as well, like, how does she know these guys' names, right? Like, how, yeah. how, how does she play into the story? Unless uh, she was the one that was fighting against the hero at the time, and she was the one that killed them in a sense and brought them here. And then maybe she was spying on them or something of that mm-hmm. nature. But like, how else would she know their names? Right. So, yeah, no, exactly. And and maybe that ties into like, you know, a lot of this week's episode focused on um, Shlain and the human side as they began their journey into the, uh, the labyrinth, um, which I thought was really well done. I'm glad they, you know, kind of painted a, a bigger picture of the labyrinth, especially with like the labyrinth sickness and how mm. like being underground and everything kind of you know fucks with your uh different like senses and things like that so you can't be down there for for too too long um uh, mm. but i think the real big thing was the fact with uh Shlaine, he starts having a lot of like dreams and almost like visions of different potential characters and more specifically of spooky that one uh kid from their class um mm. that has like the little fang tooth and so now i'm <laughs> now now i'm kind of wondering like is spooky but potentially the demon lord because i had originally thought that spooky was um the vampire girl but now the Mm. fact that they like specifically had spooky show up in like the the vision or dream of slain's then i don't know i I don't know what the connection is there and even slain himself was kind of just like what what the hell you know why why spooky why am i you know seeing this person at this time yeah most definitely um, um, I can't like I just can't imagine it being the demon lord, you know. Just yeah. I mean, how so, cliche would that be? I don't be? know. <laughs> it's just like man, I, I just need answers. Like you know, I I think it's a lot of fun to sit here and like think about it, but it's just like mm-hmm. oh man, okay, we we've gotten this far, so you know, so far it's like let just give us a little bit more. Give me another breadcrumb, please. <laughs> like, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm still enjoying it, though. It's man, I just hate being wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, man, I had it all pictured out. Like, this is this is pretty damn good. Uh, can't wait to see how they reveal it. But now it's more of you like you weren't even correct. So right. I, and now it's kind of like that, that fear in your mind of just like, OK, if what I thought, you know, where all the pieces were kind of fitting together. And now that's right. all just been kind of torn apart. Now it's like, mm-hmm. uh oh, you know, can I have, I guess, faith in them that you know, now whatever this new route is going to be, how is it going to be done well? Which I, I think it will be. Um, I think obviously, you know, time and time again, they've really tried to show that things are at a much bigger scale than we kind of, you know, originally thought from, you know, the the, the get-go of the show. So mm-hmm. I think it's now just a question of how far are they really going to expand this whole thing of like, you know, the administrators, uh, the end of the world, which... Um, you know, it was kind of brought up again when uh, Shalane mm-hmm. and the group was um, approached by, like, all the spiders, the vestiges, I think they called them. And they were just, like, mm-hmm. chanting, like, oh, the end of the world, yada, yada, yada. And just, like, that was a super kind of, like, ominous scene where they're just, like, you know, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, and then, like, and then, like, how do they know the reincarnated? Like, what's what's their connection? Because, obviously, it's not Kuma yeah. Kunamar, right? Because there's, she obviously can't be a demon lord. So where where does the connection lie? And then, like you said, uh, with eight episodes, I feel like it's starting to get more convoluted. Well, do we know that, though? Like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to still think, like, on, like, the timeline perspective, like, so when Shlaine and the group went down into the labyrinth, like, they specifically mentioned um, the mother spider making, like, the huge hole in the right. ceiling, for which mm-hmm. we saw, you know, last episode with Kumiko. And then shortly after 
that kind of uh, conflict with Kumiko and then the mother spider, that was when she, you know, went out to sea and everything and then got like obliterated by the demon lord. And now mm. it's just literally a floating head in the ocean. And it's kind of hard to still tell, like, where where at that time is Kumiko mm -hmm. in relation to the time where Shlane and them are in the labyrinth? Is that yeah. still like years and years apart? Is that, you know, months? Is that same time? Are we are we finally at the same time period or I don't know. Can you imagine if we were on the whole time and it was the same timeline, <laughs> same time, same time period. Oh well, my God. I mean, the I only thing so we know safely that obviously it couldn't be that is um, the vampire girl, right? Because you figure Kumiko met the vampire girl when she was a baby and stayed right. away from the carriage. And then when Shlane met them, she's all grown up. So that would be the only thing is that we know, like, okay, there's some time passage. But mm -hmm. yeah, in terms of like the current events with Kumiko just, you know, being a floating head in the ocean and trying to figure out like her next steps. I don't know. So uh, I, I just hope yeah. that it's not the fact that, yeah, she was ahead for 16 years or whatever. <laughs> and then now her body is fully regenerated, like regenerated. And then she's going to meet up with the guys and they're going to like, yeah, I, I don't want, I definitely don't want that to happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the same boat with you on that. I don't want them teaming up to then fight like the common enemy of the demon Lord. Cause I feel like that would just be kind of, Kind of sloppy. I like it when you have, you know, bad guys that aren't necessarily uh, bad guys. Right. So. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see, man. Oh man, I, I'm a little worried here. Not gonna lie, but <laughs> it's still it's still pretty. I mean, good. hey, we, yeah, we still got we still got what? Still half of like full core of twelve episodes. So even yeah. a little bit more than that. So a lot to work with. So yeah. Hmm. We we shall see, but I definitely agree with you. A lot of a lot of curveballs and new kind of thought processes were were thrown in with this week and what we learned so yep looking forward to see where it goes all right so that's gonna be it for i'm a sparse so what uh let's move on to our next show let's talk about Hige hero Ooh, this uh it's getting spicy how do you guys <laughs> feel about our who, uh, who our wants, female cast here who wants to start the rant i don't know i feel like someone wants to rant i mean i feel like threaten you, you were saying you had some words for oh my god for yeah. this week's episode right so yeah take it away yeah, the the iroha girl is just not iroha man this like, is just like, a like girl because we can't yeah, it's basically name. It has a name <laughs> i actually have the name down boom take that well then uh, you say it next time, at right? the same time I, I feel kind of bad because there's other characters i should definitely know their names i, I don't have them and yet i Decided I ended up putting her name down. Uh, it's, it's I don't know, like when like that. I, it's, um, the the little rant too where they were uh, oh God, what was it when when Goto was talking about how like with issues of family with family friend run away bring up and they basically bring up like a uh, uh the whole thing where it's like oh promise not to fall in love again. It's just like why do they have to keep bringing this up? It's just like it's because this should be like a normal thing, right? Um. I'm I'm assuming no. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, I, I don't mm. like any of the girls of this show. Well, I'm just gonna basically Jeez. say like I think they're all pretty terrible. Wow. Yeah. Rude. Yeah, it's I, uh I you. He's the victim here. Yeah, I know. But she's also high school. <laughs> so, uh, uh, of the three, she's uh she's now probably my favorite. I don't I don't know, dude. Goto is just fucking weird to me. It's there's just like so it's just some weird shit with her. I I, I don't really, it's really hard to explain. It's because it's, just like, weird vibes, it's because she didn't like him until like she got jealous and then she had that like oh I didn't that realize I didn't realize what I had until it was gone. So it's just annoying that yeah, it took I, that for for her to, and just dude, to be to be fair though, realistically, did she do anything wrong like throughout the whole well, series so far? I think a, I think a big part of her like her personality her her main personality I know she kind of makes it she where she wants to be like mysterious. But it right. keep change. It keep changes. Like it, it just changes so fast. Where she'll be yeah. basically like, where uh, she'll be like, kind of like the like where it's like mystery. She'll be like really helpful, outgoing, or she'll be like really, really flirty. Then all of a sudden, she'll be like really shy, and it's just she's just all over the board. For me, it's like that's, I don't like that's the mystery part. <laughs> I don't like characters who flip flop. So know, <laughs> like for me, it's like you had your chance, you blew it, and now move on. That's just, that's, that's like that's my thing. That too. Well, like that's why I don't well, want her to. Hold, hold on, how, how does she blow it? She didn't blow anything. She, she rejected him, and then like, yeah, and then she like moved. Like they decided to move on, but then 
it was um, afterwards that she got jealous that she wanted him back, which I just see, I don't like. So I feel like she also did have a like she actually did have a boyfriend. You know, like when when uh they were like first talking like as of, uh, episodes ago, where um he's just like, oh, I thought you had a you had a boyfriend. She's like, nah, that wasn't a thing. I'm, and I think a bitch, you lied. You know, you had somebody. <laughs> look, look, look. All right, <laughs> unless some guy shows up, I still feel like See, she did nothing wrong. The only reason why I think a guy is gonna show up is because like this, like the like I hated the end of this episode. Like oh, I feel yeah, like we're gonna be part. going some stupid <laughs> unnecessary drama now. Immediately when I thought that, I was thought like, okay, one, they're gonna throw somehow throw that she had a previous boyfriend. So it's like, who the fuck makes this like the, the flashbacks of this band makes it look like he's the shit. It's like, and then who? If you're the shit, like, why do you go back to like work at a convenience store? And then like, it's I don't know, like the whole the whole story with him just seemed like completely, uh, just just terrible and, un- and unnecessary. Like, it's just gonna be some dumb shit now. Well, while Stratton here is just hang on, go. I'm so I'm just gonna focus on the coworker because she was just so. So unnecessary this episode. Like that was way yeah. more unnecessary. Yeah, there's oh, a lot of you mean Yuzo? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I forgot her name, so yeah. Yep, Sorry? that that's who we're talking. No, or, Yuzo, no, no uh, the the coworker that basically yeah. confessed a few episodes ago and then they ran into each other again. Oh. Oh, the one that was basically when, like uh, when Goto and Sayu were having their moment and Yoshida uh, went out and then, to like, get, get food. Yeah. Yeah, and and then like and then she was like, Isn't it weird that you two like went out of the office and you went to go eat for dinner and you went to your place oh and he, oh and Yoshida's stalker like, stalker mode. Why the hell did you <laughs> yeah. know that? Yeah, we basically oh, have so. a stalker, some dude that or some girl that just switches like her personality like this. Honestly, I don't I don't have a problem with Yuzuha. I'm more in the camp really? of not really liking um Goto, just because you know she's already shown us. Okay, we, we can't trust her once. I know Kuya. It's not a <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> a opinion that will sit well, but I I think it's something where we can't fully trust her yet still. And the thing that irks me is because she's shown in the past that we can't trust her, and then in this episode she's acting all you know really sentimental and being that support structure for now Sayu when you know they were kind of having their moment. In the back of my head, I'm kind of just like, because I like Sayu a lot. And obviously, you know, she's been through some shit and we have to learn what her her story truly is. And if Goto's going to come in and just kind of be like that division that tries to rip her out of the picture, it just acts like, you know, fake as she as we've seen. Yeah. That's going to probably piss me off a little bit. Yeah, Sayu's actually my number like, Goto, Goto could have had a full change of heart and she might be, you know, a great, great addition to the crew. But we just can't Absolutely. trust her yet. We don't have enough yet. Like, yeah. So I think that's the thing. Yeah, as of right now, somehow Sayu. Yeah, like Sayu somehow is like number one now. She, she could still I mean... win and I'd be fine, but the way if she wins is, you know, super fucked up and she's still playing games, then ooh, this mm. bitch need to die. You think Yuzoha has any shot after being a creeper? No. Oh, hell, hell, no. hell no. She's just, she's just there to be the constant kind of like other conflict that has no chance of winning. Yeah, I like how she basically, she shows up, basically yells at this guy. It's like, oh, thanks. And then just walks away. It's just like, and then where uh, like MC is just like, what the fuck just happened? Basically, the thing yeah. that uh, yeah. to get to like the the last part of this at week's episode, the one thing I'm not looking forward to is now the one like convenience store coworker. Yeah. Super drama. The that, fucking that, super that guy drama. is yeah. now probably gonna come in and like do something fucked up, and then now that's gonna cause some. Just... Hopefully Yoshida, you know, comes to save the day yet again for Sao. But man, once I saw that guy at the end of the episode, I was like, oh man, this fuck boy, like. I just, we, need, I just, we need to take him out. I was thinking, like, oh boy, we're about to go downhill. <laughs> Ooh, oh yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it'll depend on how it plays out. But when they like introduce this dude, it's like, like, why? Why would this guy be going like to this convenience store? Like, where was yeah. he before this? And it was just. I don't it's know. like, oh my god! I just it's want. I just want more about on Sayu. Like, just have her like overcome her trauma and like. That's like well, for me. One way, I guess. <laughs> for me, that's like the whole point of this story is, is about her overcoming it. So it's like that's all I'm paying attention to, and that's why See, I, I agree with you, Strand. It's just it's just got, it's so much unnecessary drama for this guy yeah. to come in. I mean, you can kind of see it, David. I mean, if you want to look at it in one way, you can think of it as this could be overcoming her trauma because this guy's <sighs> here. Even though I don't think he's gonna, I don't think he's gonna stick with it at this place. I think he's gonna have. I think he's gonna be booted out at some like you know two episodes maybe. I can't see this man just like hanging around, and I also don't think of him. As, I don't think he's just going to have like a change of heart and become like a a normal dude, unless we're going to you know pull some goto shit with this dude too. Hey, but if Vegeta I, can change, Anio can change, baby. Oh my god, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Still a douchebag, by the way. There it is. 
Yeah. Hey, it doesn't matter. He changed. He's a changed man, okay. right? I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see how next episode goes. Oh god, I'm I'm dreading that episode, which comes out tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> oh Same. right, yeah. I'm sure. Like, like in my honest opinion, I'm pretty sure Goto is probably going to screw him over. But I'm going to have hopes that her heart is as big as her chest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, the only guy that I think is going to be a the only person I think is going to be a real problem is going to be Yusuha, and um, out of jealousy, and then that guy because I'm assuming. He's gonna do something shitty. So. See, I, yeah. I feel like Yuzuha would be the one to sell out the whole situation. Uh, like right. She would be the one to basically throw oh, everybody yeah. on the bus. Yeah, yeah. If, if the stalker thing wasn't like a giant tell, right? I mean, yeah. at least Goto's not stalking you, right? Yeah. She yeah, treated her face fair. and said, "Hey, fair. you want to go to barbecue?" Yeah. Like, I want to. She just she just <laughs> leading you on. <laughs> Guys, what what if this turns into school days? Oh God, that's like that's uh, like that's fifteen years old, Strand. We don't need it anymore. Hey, yeah. it's about it's been 15 years, David. Yeah. There needs to it's be another in the past. one. It's in the past. Hey. Let it, let it That's what you say. Oh, something's what, needed to say. What's, in the what's past. been happening? What's been happening this year and last year? The past has been coming oh, back. God. Digimon, Java Kick. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like a, that's being another Boku no Pico. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't <laughs> need to be a thing. All yeah, right. it doesn't either. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Moving on. We, Thanks, shall Thanks, right. we shall see. That's Basically, right. long story short, the cast of characters does not need to keep expanding. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just going to yep. plant that in everybody's head, though. You know, school oh, days. Damn it. And that's how we end Coming this, soon. this week's session of PK Hero. <laughs> Thanks, Shred. So yeah. That's it for PK Hero. Let's move on to our next show. Let's talk yes. about Moriarty, the Patriots. I like this week's episode. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I'll be interested to see Taylor. Did you like this week's episode comparative to obviously the very action oriented episode last week? It's all right. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's, okay. that's about how I feel about the show now. I honestly just like this first season like way more than the second season. Uh, and I don't really know like that very much got accomplished in this episode. Um, Fair. And I just it's wanna, all right. I just want to say like after, after catching up to last week, I'm still watching this like. There's so many conspiracy theories. This show is just one big conspiracy <laughs> theory. Just like to throw a revolution in Britain. That's all it is. You just want it's, it's just a big conspiracy theory. Like I get a little bit oh sorry, go ahead, dude. I was like, because it started with like, oh, it's just like this little scuffle between the neighborhood and like the Scotland Yard. And then it just pulls up into it, oh, we're gonna use this 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 uh this is gonna blow up into a big event, and then we're gonna use this to start a riot, and then this riot will turn into a revolution, just like we did in France. That we, we by the way, that we controlled and made a new conspiracy. So I just think it's it's sort of funny and kind of sad. That's how the the story just escalated. It's just a big conspiracy. Yeah. Well, I think given like actually last week after last week's episode with the whole focus of Jack the Ripper and everything, I actually started looking more into like the lore of Sherlock Holmes and a lot of the different like side cases. Um, and I think there's definitely going to be much more of an expansion of characters as this series goes on. Um, one character in particular was that, um, what was his name? Charles Augustus Milverton. Yeah. He was like briefly mentioned in, in one of the episodes. And I guess he plays a pretty prominent role in the series um and so he's obviously probably going to be coming back in one form or another and then specifically in this week's episode um like you were saying you know now uh scotland yard is kind of in like the back pocket of uh moriarty and his group because they have patterson who basically worked with their team to help uh acquire that ledger of the one like crooked cop um but i think for me I enjoyed this episode more just in the sense that obviously, you know, we're, we're getting Sherlock back into the mix. Obviously, it was a very small dosage of it, but I think it's now driving back towards the larger game between Sherlock and Moriarty, where at the very end of this episode, Moriarty said, you know, now he's ready to kind of unleash his like big, big plan. Actually, so I am interested to see where that goes. Yeah, I like the development of Sherlock where he he's in that dilemma now where he understands that Moriarty, like even he's trying to do th- like the good like good things for for society even though it's like it's like was it like a means to an end whatever like so he so he had a dilemma where it's like he doesn't like with today's episode he didn't want to um to mess up too much of the plan because he knew that like if he if he got in the way of moriarty then like then innocent man would go to jail and so he basically had to like be a pawn of his plan which he which he hated but he really again that dilemma 
where he has to make that choice. And so I, I really like that conflict. So hopefully we see more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just kind of last off from mine, I also think, you know, with that Charles character who was kind of the the main individual pulling the strings behind this whole Jack the Ripper incident, I think he's probably going to obviously, you know, come into play and be like a potential third party. I don't think we really know any alignment between either Sherlock or Moriarty with him. He's kind of his own now standalone. He was the group, one who, so. who found out about Moriarty, right? He um he saw Moriarty leave uh the like the building where he killed all those eight yep. people. Yeah. Yep. So. He was the one that was like looking through like the eyeglass yeah, across so the street we'll or whatever. Oh well, yeah, I definitely could see him being like I guess a the villain soon. So. Yeah. But no, I yeah. totally agree where the change of pace has been from season one to season two. So I think for me, I just like I'm not I am not, not actually looking forward to more characters being introduced. I still feel like we really haven't even gotten close to the people that are involved with Moriarty, like his yeah. partners. I, Very true. Um, I feel like we've just keep on adding in like a new iconic character with each episode. And it feels like a token character each time to me. I which is not always true because um, I forget what her original name was now, but James Bond is actually playing oh, Irene Adler. Irene, yeah. thank you, Irene Adler, yeah. <laughs> and she is actually blending in, and it does work. So, I mean, she was all right. I was very skeptical, but she's she's fitting in okay. I think that for me, I have a really hard time paying attention to the plot or caring about the plot at all because it just reads as so ridiculous to me. Um, and then the way theories. they execute it. Yeah, it's all it's, it's, it's all conspiracy theories, and it's all like a a fairly large number of people at this point now who are way more smart than they should be, or can just read minds or yeah. something. It's not even just Moriarty and Sherlock anymore who are like geniuses. It's other people getting in on it too, and it, it's just so ridiculous that I I don't really care. I, um, I totally agree in the sense that it almost does feel like, apart from Moriarty and Sherlock, it's now also almost becoming like a James Bond anime. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have Q, <laughs> well, basically Q from the James Bond series that builds, mm -hmm. like, all the gadgets and tools that Bond uses. And we saw that, you know, in this mm -hmm. week's episode yeah. when Irene went and got the suppressor gun from him. So now that's in and my mind. Car. I could, in yeah, the car. In the car. <laughs> yep, yep, the automatic car. Um, so I can totally see this now going the route of, especially with... Um, Sherlock's brother, who's basically the head of you know secrecy and everything, he was talking I'm, with it, with more the chain. Was it uh the older Moriarty brother too? Albert, yeah, Albert, Albert yeah. Moriarty. So, so now I, I totally see them going the route of like they're probably going to bring in MI6. There's probably going to be like a Money Penny and like these other like iconic figures. So you know, unfortunate to your point, Taylor. I definitely think they're going to completely drill into like, hey, these are famous characters from you know across the pond. Like people will really like this. They'll be like, oh, I know that character. So. I think they're going to do that. I think it's they're almost going down a similar vein of like um, for people that know, like the Fate series, especially Fate Grand Order, which oh. completely utilizes like a bunch of characters throughout history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to kind of go that route, but specifically to like English, you know, literature and, and lore and stuff. Oh, that's actually a really good comparison. You're right. It does remind me of that. Yeah. It should make a mobile game. <sighs> hey. I know. I'm just more reminded of the Assassin's Creed oh, yeah. series, like when they like just like try to have fun with the history there it's like i get that it's one yeah. thing but i don't know like just the someone who does just know like i had an understanding of that time period it's like it's just it's just so weird i can't like suspend my disbelief like when you're saying yeah. like all these things yeah. happening the, and like the how, premise is just know. getting very diluted for sure yeah. like at the beginning it was very simple it's like you got sherlock you got moriarty all mm -hmm. right let's bring them together and now it's like Okay, hey, we'll get there, but hey, do you guys like James Bond? Hey, do you like, you know, this? Do you like that? And you're just grabbing at all these pieces. And so you I, know what? I, I, yeah. It feels like fan fiction. <laughs> that's what this show feels yeah, like to me, to be what, honest. That's, that's, what, that's a good way to put it. That describes it, yeah. Like, it started out, it reminds me of so many stories I've read where this author will clearly have, like, an idea that they're, like, leaning hard into, but then they're like, but wouldn't it be cool if I, like, threw in this character that had this power that's like a long lost brother who has amnesia of this person let's grab a couple famous people and like the, the, the plot just gets like com very confused the further along that you go and it just kind of seems like somebody's wish list of things they want to see happen in the totally. show but totally. it's not my wish list so uh I mean, i'll watch it because i'm kind of invested but I'll, like weirdly i like miss sherlock and moriarty like i miss them i feel like sherlock's barely been in it and no i mean that's, i feel the same way like ever since like yeah, it's season two star. Like that's that's all mm -hmm. I'm here for. I'm, I want the mind games and yeah. It's and even like Moriarty's like mission of help, trying to like make society better. It's like we barely get to see any of that because it's all like just 
all fighting against like these other people so yeah i think it was last week taylor said not to continue to talk here but you don't see that logical process of moriarty it's pretty much you know moriarty just comes up he's like all right execute this plan and then it's just assumed like he's moriarty this is how it works and then like we just learn it we don't get like the actual like logical steps of you know planning and, and more depth to his character it's now just oh he's really smart he can do whatever so you know just accept it and that's just like poor writing yeah so yeah we we shall see but now with all yeah. these characters i have a feeling the show's probably gonna go for a while now i only thought when i first picked it up i thought oh this will maybe be a season two seasons at most if it's just mm-hmm. you know sherlock and moriarty and now i'm thinking i could see it being like three maybe four like i don't know how much material yeah, i don't know seems like there's a lot of it if they're doing a lot it's, of you know side it's, characters it's running, now. it's running in jump square the monthly jump manga oh magazine. okay so that's so it has big hmm. name behind it. I, I don't know how long it's running but Interesting. We'll see. Hmm, so, interesting. Sounds good. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for Marty this week. Hopefully, next week for more conspiracy theories of how <laughs> Britain is super important and how they got. Well, let's hope not. Otherwise, it sounds other, like I might be the only other. one continuing with the show here. Also, watch it, but <laughs> just, God damn. Yeah, also watch it too. Don't don't, okay. mess, don't tell me that okay, Britain okay. is behind everything. <laughs> All right. Sounds All right. good. So that's it for Marty the Patriots. Let's move on to. Are we talking about Bakuten? Are we still watching that? We, uh, two of us are. <laughs> yeah, so I, I dropped it. Okay, you want to talk about Bakuten? <laughs> but I'm interested to hear because Threaten seemed to like it. Yeah, which is too bad because this is the episode where it it reminded it had uh it reminded me more of Haikyuu, where mm. they had like that um uh where they ended up spending like the night at that hotel area for like one night where it just got like like really the like, kind of like the creepy vibes where everybody was like scared of like ghost stories and whatnot. You got to know the characters more. It was similar uh, with this episode where they just ended up playing t- uh, hide and seek at night with the two captains that were apparently just terrible at finding people. They I, they found nobody during the entire time, but it was more like you got they they were all in groups of two, so they all got you got to learn more about the characters. Um, you kind of you get to just kind of get their personality more uh, with their backstory. And it just had like more like the high vibes, like the good high vibes, where you where you finally got like a little bit more of a connection with some of these characters. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty much all that happened. My my, I didn't really have too many gripes this episode. They didn't repeat the jokes that have been just driving me absolutely crazy oh, they did throughout say the whole season. <laughs> um, the only thing that they did repeat was that the previous episode was also them pairing off with like their similar member from the other team, and. Mm. That literally happened the episode before, and then they did it again this episode, and the exact same thing happened. They'd be like, oh, I like that, too. Oh, but I like this thing more, and then they get into an argument about, like, the same thing but opposite. Like, oh, I love fruit. What's your favorite fruit? Apple. Mine's orange. And then you fight. Like, that's an example. So, uh, like... This one, though, this one, they did have, like, an extra, like another person would just kind of wander over to their group, though. So, it'd be, like, three people in a group. Like, the, white, yeah, like yeah. the white-haired dude. Yeah, the white-haired mm-hmm. dude with those... The, Kageyam and whoever the hell they are guys mm. <laughs> yeah so I mean it was oh, yeah it was better um, but God, that's not really all <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm glad to hear that 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 they've started to flesh out the characters more because I know that was like yeah. a big gripe from last week um, the yeah, lighting was done really well sorry Justin the lighting no, the- was done really well in this episode like I've noticed the lighting on several different accounts and they put some budget into it that's, that's a right. positive <laughs> I mean, hey, I, it was like David was asking me earlier about uh, Mars Red. You know, the story's not really hitting a home run by any means, but the music and artwork is really great. So mm-hmm. I literally keep up with that show just for those reasons. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. They haven't had like another. Yeah, th- they're basically just in training now, aren't they? Uh, they're basically yeah. In camp, training camp. Ostensibly, in supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully they don't stay in training camp for too long if we're at, you know, the, the midway point and they... <laughs> <laughs> Got to flesh out this whole team coming together, potentially beating the rival team or wherever, you know, they kind of want to end it off. So, and I think speak, so. this is this is the episode I was dozing off, wasn't it? I, yes. OK, <laughs> I couldn't remember. I maybe didn't wake you up. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why I was better, too. I don't know. It's but, like, oh, man, that episode flew by. This yeah, it went by quick. It was this is a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. I got the main part. I'll see what part. you guys think next week. One, hopefully they get out of training camp or maybe go some more great. I'm in. I'm in too one deep. more. One more episode to. Yeah, I know. I know David hates this, but I'm in too deep. I gotta finish it. I mean, hey, I respect that. You made it. You made a commitment to a show, and yeah, 
Hey, we we all know some cast fell, <laughs> so we just can't fight against it. Yeah, I just let it go. I, I I've gi- I've given in. Fair. That's all I got. All I got. Okay. I guess I'll be at Provocaten. Let's talk about the real sports show this season, Bernie and Kabati. Oh okay, my god. So- I have never been so depressed before listening to someone talk about an anime show that they didn't like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh Oh Lord. Yeah. I don't know. To be fair, I mean like um for this one, okay, so Taylor said she really liked this episode. Yeah, I, I don't know why I you had, didn't like oh, it. I had Dude, this episode feeling. was so good. Okay. Oh my okay. god. Yeah, well, things, okay, thank God. Thank you, Koo. Okay, a couple of the issues that I had. The first one is mm. um was like their vice captain just trash. Like this the I, I, I like they make this like the vice captain think like he's like so this, this badass. They're, like he knows all he this shit. He hasn't done anything yet. He keeps getting taken out by the hand guy like every single time this man gets tagged like he did nothing because he's a he's a raider type he hasn't been able to show off his abilities because the captain's gone and they've relied on the mc to pop off so like what is he gonna do but the vice captain didn't do anything he just kept getting tagged because he hasn't had the time to be a raider yet that's his Mm -hmm. specialty right Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, i don't know like this man like he seems like he's just too human like you're gonna lose to the you're gonna lose to the swimmer come on I mean, this guy was like the number one in his country, and like he's trying to oh. get to number one in Kabaddi, and he's pretty much already almost there. But, so I mean, but another the, another thing that I hated is like these like m- like crucial rules that this vice captain forgot to mention mm-hmm. about how you can just you know you can you basically can get to the other line even if you basically jump out you're on like the side you don't touch the out of bounds but you're able to cross the line. <laughs> so, yeah, that seems like a pretty vital rule to kind of go it's- over. It's. I, I guess they left it out for our plot device later in the future. Yeah, I suppose. This episode. So yeah, I mean, for, it's, for this. It, it, it's fine. Okay. I, it's it's cheap way to <laughs> progress the story, but it, it it works, I guess. To to be fair, to be fair, it's not like this is an actual competition, right? There's still the whole point of this is for them to be learning and still going over rules and still learning plays. So I mean, yeah, it, well, what does it really matter? The vice captain. This guy is supposed to be like you know he's supposed to be like the the shit. It's just like what the fuck you could do that. He's like oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. So it's like, oh, thanks, man. Oh, okay, Here. well, again, so it's it's still practice match, and he himself mentioned that as long as you like get the basics down, the other rules will just come to play later. So oh, he, okay. he already stated, like, like in the previous episode, that that's not important right now. What's important right now is you you getting your basics down. Yeah. So, yeah. There's one yeah. more. There's one more. There's one more thing that I had about okay. that 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 great me about that, but I forgot it. So we'll move on. <laughs> I mean. But the parts I liked, dude, their uh, fucking captain is my favorite. Like he's, he's yeah, there was he's so only good moments. He's badass. Oh my god, he's so yeah. cool. <laughs> I like I like how basically this guy, the only way he was able to injure himself injure himself is training too hard. <laughs> yeah, like no one can take me down. Only I can take myself down. Dude, when they were talking about that and it was something about him hurting his legs, it reminded me of this guy I used to be an ROTC with who did um Muay Thai and he was talking about how like some people break their legs or do something they injure their own legs to like build them back stronger or something yeah, like that dude. for that and I totally thought that's good but he would die. that note <laughs> I, I had a note before they actually mentioned like he hurt himself from training yeah. I thought like how they were going on I was like dude is there, are there, I, I thought he purposely hurt himself to, like basically like that to get to like to make himself stronger like I actually even put that in my nose for Kabaddi. I was like, "Damn!" I was uh-huh. like, "Holy shit!" Are they really gonna go down the path that this man like like broke his own leg? <laughs> uh, and then they, no, they, it's not, then, not that sinister. Yeah, <laughs> and then they basically changed it, and he was just from training. I was like, "Oh, well, okay. You're, you're I mean, still it's badass. Like, it's fine." It's, yeah, basically the yeah. same thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're still just a beast. Yeah, dude. It's just his analogies, the way he looks at the game and at life. It's it's so beautiful. Like Kabaddi is like this this Kabaddi's life culture. Yeah, it's life. Like I'm constantly chasing after her. The reason why you suck is because you don't love the game as much as I do. It was like, yeah. oh yeah, it's so she, lame, but it sounds so badass when he said it. She's <laughs> never gonna look at you. She's never gonna look at you because I you're like, not good enough. I liked the relationship between him and the captain of the other team yeah. too. Like I feel like it didn't take very much time, but it was very well developed. Like you could feel that they were friends and rivals and had, uh-huh. you know, trained together. Like I thought it was really well done. The character building and relationship building in this is a lot better than another show that we might have just trashed. Um, yeah. Yeah. I will say though, yeah. I fell asleep um not this week's episode, but the week the week before. I kept on falling asleep during that episode. I don't know why. And I, so I, I watched two episodes this week. And I will wow. say, I did notice that Discount Oikawa, I finally noticed like him holding Discount. his hand. <laughs> Discount Oikawa, huh? Because 
I mean, well, he's kind of like got that Oikawa personality, right? Like he thinks he's the shit. Like he works really, really hard. He, that is fair, actually. Holy shit, yeah. But he totally sucks in comparison to Oikawa. He's a, a Chunibyo <laughs> version of uh, oh God. of Oikawa. We have to see what that well, what he's trying to do by holding his hand like like that. Um, They've never explained it, have they? No, they never. didn't. They, okay. they commented on it. Like some of the characters were even like, "Why the fuck is he standing?" Like that? <laughs> this motherfucker is a swimmer. I don't know how that has anything to correlate with swimming. But oh my god! But like, I I wish that he was a little bit more of like an like a empathetic or even like a re- more a relatable likeable character yeah like relatable or <laughs> likable because like i don't know they could learn something from him but he's so freaking obnoxious he's a douche and every single time he's he's always the guy over the line i was like holy fuck i was like can we please see somebody else fuck <laughs> no, and then, that's what, what i'm saying he's he's the the ace. Ace. you know like if you don't have to why would you change uh change the the plan right yeah yeah that makes sense so, i'll but, be honest but, I'll be honest. I wish this would go as long as Haikyuu. Like I'm getting into this. Like I, I care about the team. Yeah, that's I what I'm feel saying. their passion. Yeah. Like I want this to keep going. They don't like, have a full team yet, guys. There's I more know. characters to come. <laughs> you know? Oh my god. In. <laughs> oh, and then like I finally, I finally found out or like who the uh, the captain reminds me of. It's his name is Staz, and it's from the anime Blood Lad. I don't know if you guys remember that. I heard of it. Never saw it though. But yeah, uh, he's basically the MC and the anime sh- uh, anime called Bloodland. Who his character design reminds me of, especially when he bites slip and goes into like that that ghoul or like devil mode in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but dude, his hollow <laughs> form. <laughs> yeah, just man, the captain is so cool, man. I never thought I'd say that about another character, but it's so <laughs> cool. I like. I do also like how both sides they um, kind of help each other. Where. Like the flashback, they showed like the like um you know the ghoul captain was actually helping out the other captain, mm-hmm. where the guy was basically just trying to do like nothing but brute strength, and he basically just told him like no, no, no you, you can't just do that. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's more about the other stuff. And then you have also then that captain helping out the brute strength dude on the uh, like on their team, mm-hmm. where he, you basically just think he's like a giant tank, but then he just can't move. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he just took him down easy. So I, I like how the they're both kind of or. They're both uh, somewhat trying to make make each other better, mm-hmm. which is you know, thanks. Hey, when you when you love the game, yeah. you know that's usually how it goes, right? Mm-hmm. So I I really like how they're like kind of playing it true to that aspect where the if if you both have the same mindset and you both have that strong love for a game, like even if you're enemies, you're you're still gonna like help each yeah. other get better. So I think that's pretty cool. You want that competition? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, no, this is only the first half, so we still have the second half to look forward to. Uh, like, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, the vice captain will pop off and Strength can get off his back, you know. But uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see, dude. And then the way when they get off the court, and the captain's like, "Hey guys, give him that evil smirk oh, yeah? that, uh, <laughs> that Young right. Richie always does." And then they all did it, and they're like, "Man, don't they know they're still losing? Like, oh, like why is it like that? Like, oh man, it was, the comedy is so it's good. good at times. It's, it's oh, on point, God. yeah." That's the best horse anime this season. That's what sure. that's oh, yeah. what Bakuten is missing. The, the comedy is awful. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, bad. it's not good at all. Uh, but <laughs> There's the, the no show, comedy. <laughs> the, the, the show every time though, it's like uh, it's just on point. Gotcha. It's just good. But yeah, oh, can't wait for next episode. Dude. It's it's so good. Yep, same. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy how long the matches are too, or it's or how many points they can go to, where they just have like is it just a certain amount of time? Because they actually haven't showed us like a time. Like a clock or anything? Yeah, we still you don't know? know all the rules. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know the rules, like how time goes. Because I kept thinking, like these points kept going. I was like, "When, when does this end?" They, we don't know. Like it just, and they're like, "Oh, halftime." Sure. Yeah. I'll I guess. So, I guess the only problem if you want to nitpick is that uh, they're using the rules as like a means of plot device for later on. So I, I guess it's fine. But I, it's fine. especially yeah. it's it's fine for like this kind of like obscure sport as well, where nobody knows of it. Right. Because like, it's more of like mm-hmm. I mean. You, you, it's not like something that like oh everybody would just know so you just kind of go you just burn through it this they're actually mm-hmm. using it as like you said like a plot device which works for it as yeah. somebody who's like really not sports minded at all like i don't know anything about any sports except figure skating <laughs> um mm-hmm. i i actually really like the way that they explain it in this anime how you said that like they use they teach the rules by plot points it helps the rules stick in my head a lot better 
Mm -hmm. normally normally when people go into sports speak my mind just turns off so it works really well (laughs) for for me (laughs) uh they even had the the soccer coach from yogoshi school but the but the oh yeah oh that's right yeah yeah you can do that yeah that's right (laughs) oh like are you even necessary i mean whatever we had the commentators and the bleachers just like in haiku it was great (laughs) at least it makes sense with this one you know yes (laughs) <laughs> the the one thing I was gonna say though for the vice captain is like now there's almost like no point for him to raid because the captain's there, you know. True, true. Unless he uh, gets taken out and then you know right. somebody has to step up. Yeah, we still got the second half. Anything can go at this mm-hmm. point. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I got. Well, I got two. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna be it for burning capacity. Get on, Justin. <laughs> talk about, <laughs> I'm back. Talk about my show no Alto. <laughs> Oh, I, didn't have, I didn't have enough time to watch it, so I watched the. I listened to the new opening. Terrible. I love the first one more. Yeah, oh, I know. Like right? I, I thought bringing, it was really good. No, bring, I was, no. Bring it back. Bring back the first one. No, yeah, I'm not the, the bad, first one just hit so much harder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first I, I one was definitely better. Them, I didn't expect them to switch up to a different opening. Yeah. Oh God, too early. Yeah, it's so, so few weird. Episodes. Yeah, it's even the same band. Like why? I'm glad they kept the band the same because yeah, if they went like complete opening with whole new different band, then I'd be like, what the hell is going on? Like. We they, only went through like you know a small series of events. Like this doesn't warrant a whole new opening, but yeah, right? very strange. You stick with burnout syndromes and you remove the shamisen. Come on, <laughs> why do you do that? I know, right? I mean, come on, yeah. bro. I mean, they even <laughs> kept the the end uh, the end piece the same. You know? Yeah. So well, why did yeah. you change that too? I mean, I'm glad they did it because it's still a banger. But like, why would you just switch the opening and not the end? Definitely, well, definitely so, not. That was weird. But... Definitely. Not That's all I can comment on, though. So I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Anybody else want to kick it off? I don't really remember <clears throat> everything that happened because I watched like four episodes today. <laughs> I don't even remember which point I'm at. Oh, Lord. Okay, well, first off, how do you like it so far going back in? I mean, I don't know. I, I like The reason I decided to watch it was um, I remember you guys were talking about the week where he plays for the grandma and he tries mm. his own hand at it and somebody said it was emotional. Yeah, and, the, the and, one I that was good. That one was that one was fine. I didn't find anything emotional. I I don't know. I just feel like there's just like a lot of like drama for no reason. <laughs> no, the, I, the episode I liked was the one after that with the the team and actually playing as a group. And then yeah. you know when he was yeah that one was that one I thought was really good. Yeah, I liked that too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's something I just I just don't super relate to it. I just wanted to give it another shot to to like give it a fair shake, and I'll probably keep watching it, but. Hmm. the characters don't hit with me the plot doesn't hit with me it's very artsy like how 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 metaphorically they speak about the music and stuff i'm just like man i don't have time for this (laughs) (laughs) in english son (laughs) english please no i think Uh, that's totally fair i would agree that like a lot of the side characters you know, now they each seem to have their own problems and backgrounds that are being overcome. Like this week's episode focused on Kaito, you know, who is an up and coming soccer player. And, you know, we obviously got to see his his parents perspective on how they wanted him to be a lawyer. And his dad really never had any faith of him becoming, you know, this great soccer player anyways. Mm-hmm. And then now he's just driving all of that um, passion and kind of initiative into the Shamisen, which I think is great in its own regard. But I'm definitely in the mindset of I really care about Setsu. Like, I want to see Setsu, you know, find his his sound that he's been searching for. Entering into the the singles side of the tournament, I think, will be really great. And then, um, you know, goddamn Umiko had to come on back and, you know, get, the, get that call from that uh, the innkeeper of just like, oh, hey, he's, you know, he's in. We did it. Your plan's working. I'm just like, goddamn it, Umiko. Like, uh, uh, leave him alone. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Let this too. man find his own voice. He don't need no mom that was never there to, you know lead him down this route but um no i i think it was a it was a good episode um i don't really vibe too much with uh shuri and kind of her struggles i think you know her wanting to do the nice things for her grandma were fine but she reminds me of like being that character that is always going to be the one that's like having like the most issues and like setsu's gonna have to come and save the day just for the sense of like forcing a relationship between the two of them if that makes sense, to try to like ship them. Oh god, I really hope not. That's like yeah, right. Yuri is just that awkward character that 
is just there, but like she's too like she's like the um you don't want to tell her to go he's like away. The, he's like the Akira, Akira from uh Kimono Jihen. Oh my god, in a sense, so I'm just, like, I'm just yeah, like, like, <laughs> like even Akira didn't bother me as much. I don't know why. Like it's nothing against her, but it's oh, just like oh, I, I don't know. I would I would go that far, all right? Akira is pretty bad. <laughs> Shuri is just kind of teetering around that point. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Shuri's a mixture of uh, what was it? Uh, Cone and um, Akira. I'd say. Okay. Like fair, she, she's kind of like there for the cute factor, but she's kind of like like in a like awkward in her own sense. But she is trying, so you kind of feel bad for her. Yeah. Like, but in this episode, she definitely was really awkward when she was listening to Setsu play at the end, and then she just went wah. Like that's <laughs> not even a sound you make. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess they're trying to make it cute and all that, and I yeah. Don't know. So I mean, so, I don't know. Yeah. if you want, if you want to talk about characters that I don't vibe with, the I don't know, I have no idea anybody's names yet. I haven't uh-huh. been committed enough. But the hmm. like the rival, like the other guy who's really good with the longer hair, and I think he has glasses, and he's like played for them. A couple. Oh, times. you mean uh, Seiryu, who's like the yes, professional? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. I don't think he'll um, necessarily be the rival. I mean, he's well, just not there the rival. To... He's more, more like, like a just teacher. teacher sense, yeah. Well, yeah. The reason why I call him a rival, a rival, though, is because like he has so many intense thoughts about where everybody's <laughs> going say, with their career. He, like he's really up in their business in like uh, a creepy way. And every time it cuts to him, there's like this little riff that plays that is like such an evil little riff. <laughs> for, like, it, it is funny you mention that because I do remember that vividly in this week's episode where it's like he's nowhere near the training camp or everything, but they specifically make a reason to like you know show him like looking. <laughs> off and to your point Taylor like thinking about like you know what he heard that day with Setsu and it's just like yo man life. like you, do you want to date Setsu like what's what's going on here bro like you good he's an action bro I mean what do you I mean hey man just two bros connecting their music I mean it's all good as long as it's a banger I'm I'm all for it yeah be like no this. no no pun intended <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know. It's I think it's final. Just like the I guess the problem with the show for sure is the fact that they exaggerate on every single point. And I guess mm-hmm. uh, if you're not into that, it might be a turn off. But yeah, just like how Justin men, uh, mentioned, the show was really all about Setsu. And then that's all I care about as a person in and of itself. And uh, I guess just the fact that I can I vibe with the guy so much and I just want him to succeed so much. I guess I'm willing to overlook like all his little tidbits. So um yeah, ho- yeah. Ho- hopefully it gets better for you. But yeah, man, just sets you so far. I'm really enjoying his progression so far. It looks like he's starting to be more and more like comfortable with his sound. And uh, hopefully they cut to the the competition next week, and like we'll see a pop off from there. Because I think he's basically ready to go. I'm not sure if there's anything else that he needs to kind yeah, of. Yeah, it seemed like overcome. at the end of this week, you know, the group had played the song successfully, and Shuri no longer had her hesitation. So yeah, that like you said, hopefully we just jump forward to that, and then, well, mm-hmm. I actually feel like they're gonna drag out. Like next episode is probably gonna be either a main focus on like the team portion because you have the one um, childhood friend that's also entering into the team portion that always wanted to challenge Setsu, but Setsu, oh. mm-hmm. you know, never entered competitions back then or anything. So mm-hmm. there's probably gonna be a really big focus with her. And then is it her brother? That is the one that beat Setsu's brother in the competition. Earlier? That's what I understood it to be. Well, I don't know if they're brothers or anything, but you know, they have the one prodigy that's like, Oh, he's yeah. the next big thing. And I, I imagine that's who Setsu's going to face off against in the singles side. So yeah, I'm assuming that's who it is. Yeah, so hopefully one episode for each of those, and then mm. our well multi episodes. Pro, actually, I could see this going all the way through to the end of the season because this is only twelve episodes, right? Or yeah, you know yet? yeah, it's twelve episodes apparently. Okay, um, so I could definitely see the tournament being the rest yeah. of what six more episodes then. So uh, yeah, six or seven. But I mean, I figured at that point, right? It's uh, it's a competition meant to kind of highlight like his grandfather's name, and this is where mm. he goes out and plays the individual competition uh so i can see you winning this competition being like your starting point for your shamisen career i guess mm. so um yeah I, i'd say it would probably end once the tournament's over or competition's over yeah um, and then but yeah oh god i hope they bring back the original opening though because it just the show just doesn't feel the same <laughs> i agree you know, you don't, it was very disconcerting yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Wishful that's thinking. That's all I got, man. 
sadly. All right, so we're gonna end it there for Mushroom Ultra. Then let's move mm. on to our next show. Let's talk about Shadow House. Because my god, this show never stops being creepy. Yep. Yeah, this episode was really, really good. I was, I was definitely on the edge of my seat, like watching with bated breath through the whole episode. <laughs> Um, I felt so unprepared for the debut. I felt just like Emilico, like, oh no, this happened so fast and we haven't prepared at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. What did you guys think? I mean, I was less, uh, I guess just the whole thing of like Mia and Sarah just really creeped me out. Like, that was the Oh, the when highlight. he beat her and stuff? And... Yeah, that was the highlight. I didn't really yeah. care much about that debut. I thought it was okay. But like, just that scene is really like, was like, all I thought about this episode. Yeah, and, and also I, I the, think... the judge too. The judge is so creepy. Yeah, Edward or whatever his name is. The eyes. Um, he's got some, a bad case of crazy eyes. Yeah, he's got some eyes that'll kill. You know, one mm -hmm. one one bad look from him and it's over. <laughs> um, no, I agree with Taylor. I was I was pretty excited this episode of you know getting to the debut and and seeing you know mm -hmm. this very mis mystery event that's been hyped up. You know, this entire season of like, all right, we're preparing for the debut. Like everything rides on this. And then they get into the debut and nobody knows like what to do. They're all just kind of like scrambling. You know, even the the Shadow Lords and their living dolls are kind of just like, you know, even the ones that we think, I guess, that are more, I guess, pro quote unquote prepared, they're stumbling. And I love the way that they use like the rankings where he had like the little uh, mm -hmm. shelves and he'd, you know, drop like the little uh, marionette like type dolls or whatever you call them. Um, but I really enjoyed seeing the different shadow counterparts as well, like earlier in the episode where, you know, we, we saw a little bit of, um, John Patrick and, and Ricky, Don, yeah, John and Sean, the John and Sean threw me off where, uh, John like made Sean kiss him on the cheek or whatever. And I was, was just like, I, wait, I did know. he make him kiss him on the cheek or did he just do it on his own? No, I thought he did it on his own. He just do it on his own. It is on his own. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. it was more so something of just like, was that, was that, I was, I was like, was that a trained, like, Thing where you know we obviously Ram, don't know enough Ram about was, John and Sean. Ram was saying how like not even you know like mm -hmm. her, I heard her master's name. She says she not she doesn't even let mm -hmm. me like kiss her goodnight, whatever. So I think it's just like a thing that living dolls are expected Something to do. That they're... Okay, we never saw yeah. it with a Milica. Yeah, the Kate, only reason I guess so... it threw me off is because the other thing with John is he was wearing the glasses, right? And Sean was mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, where are your? Or John was saying, oh, Sean, why aren't you wearing your glasses? And he's like, well, we don't wear glasses. And he's like, oh, right, like that was something that you know I just did to be like unique or whatever. So John's definitely a unique Shadow Lord of sorts. And then Patrick, I could care for less because Patrick's <laughs> just an equal scumbag. He's... Like I think, Ricky, I think so. Taylor's the one to call him Draco Malfoy. He definitely has like the Draco Malfoy vibe this episode. My God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he um, even looks like him. Like, yeah, that like, too. <laughs> <laughs> right, out the, the comb over and oh. everything. So, um, I really do like. I my one little tiny tiny gripe. This is and this is like not even a thing. This is me trying to find a problem. Okay, like it's so small. But like it kind of threw me off with John how like when we see the the interaction between him and Sean in their quarters, John seems pretty chill. Like he seems almost like a like a comedic character. Like to, he I yeah. he felt very laid back to me, and it seemed like he was really attached with Sean. Like he really liked him, and they got along. Um, and then when it got to the debut, I kept on getting thrown off because John was kind of coming at the arbiter, um, Edward. I think his name was right. Mm -hmm. He yep. was kind of coming at him like a couple of times when Edward wouldn't give them like instructions for what they were supposed to do. He like called him out on um, only being a living doll and he sh they shouldn't be taking orders from him anyways. And it just felt a little bit odd to me since like Ricky and Patrick were right there and they're kind of like the token assholes of the group. So it just Definitely. felt like I couldn't like get a read on John's pers uh, personality. So that kind of irked me. But that was it. That's like my first grade well, of the season. I was going to say, I mean, I, it, that's, it just sounds like John is really attached to his doll. And I guess like, that's like part of it. That part of the chill personality, you say. And then, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't blame him for like being yeah. pissed off at the arbiter. Cause like, cause, cause I would be mad too in his position if he didn't know what was going on for like this important thing that they didn't get any instructions with. So. Yeah. I don't really. It makes me nervous because I don't want him to get them kicked out, or I don't want him to make yeah. them fail because he's being a jerk. Because I like them. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Is it almost seems like Edward doesn't want them to, to succeed because you know he's obviously yeah. raised to this rank of you know not needing a um a shadow figure because that was something mm -hmm. that they had asked like, hey, where's your shadow figure? And he's like, oh, I don't need that. Like I'm a special class of living doll and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I think even specifically there was one moment during the dance where, um. 
Ricky and Patrick didn't seem to do anything wrong with like the dance they were doing. And like Edward like angrily like moved them down like a ring. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, I, you know, I what was the rationale get, for that? Yeah. It I was almost like they were doing too well. And he was just like, yeah. he's like, how are you doing too well? Like, that's not going to stand. Like, I control everything and just like, well, you know, moved him down out of like spite. The only thing I could think of was that there was a comment that somebody made about how uh, Ricky was almost the one leading Patrick yeah. sometimes. That's that's the only thing I think. Okay. Too. It's like uh, that, was, it, that was Kate, right? When Kate was like freaking out and trying to see like, oh, been. they're doing this. They're doing that. And they're like, OK, how can I? you know, get a Milico to kind of get with the program, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. I'm so. glad that Kate was, like, not hard on Emilico. Like, she was a little bit because I think it was a stressful situation. So, like, just in general, she was stressed I mean, out we can tell, right, out. the soot was, like, constantly yeah. coming from her head, like, this entire episode. <laughs> but it wasn't, like, but I like that we got to hear into her thoughts by the end of the episode where she was talking about how she actually really does like Emilico a lot. She likes that unique app like personality trait that she has that makes her herself and i i thought that i really liked that because i was a little bit scared that this was just that she was like gonna turn on her i guess a little bit or become mm. a little bit more unlikable or unrelatable I, as I a character too yeah um so i was really pleased to hear the thoughts that she had because <laughs> i want to like kind of like support them as friends it feels like they have a good relationship going on. And I want to continue to see that develop. But I could kind of see that turning to a conflict later, though, because like, yeah. because a miracle is starting to, is too much of her own person instead of mm -hmm. reflecting her on her shadow. So I can definitely mm -hmm. see that coming an issue later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think is going to be like the the next part of this test here? Because you know, with the episode ending, we have Edward leading all the shadow it, royals outside of the room so and locking sketchy. all the dolls in there. It's well because the the name of the, the preview of the, of the next episode title is called the Sh the Garden Labyrinth. So it just it just feels oh, like oh I didn't see that. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing with the shadow. I don't know why like he would put if they're gonna be put in individual tests or not or or if it's like the dolls are just being watched. Mm. So, I wonder then. Do you think like the dolls may like the door may eventually unlock and then the dolls have to maybe find their shadow counterparts within this labyrinth? I had, or I just had this bad feeling because like how um. What was it uh like Pat, Pat Patrick like was like he was being mad at at the judge and like he was saying you know why is this doll treating this shadow why is he treating the shadow like this and then he seemed it seemed like he fought up for it a little bit but then like it just sounds like later when he opened the door like like he's it felt like he was so in control and it, it just felt like so mm -hmm. sketchy that like like he he's not doing it as like as a favor for them it sounds like it's part of like the the debut trial where so i don't know, i don't have any good feelings about them mm. being separated and going to the, the garden so yeah no i think the other last two kind of things for me is one i'm interested to finally see what uh rum's shadow counterpart is like where you know is she just really kind of quiet and soft-spoken like rum and potentially it's a reverse dynamic where rum as the living doll is actually the one kind of leading things along and gets, you know, the shadow figure to come out of her shell, so to speak. Um, and then the only other thing that I was going to update was when I was reading the um, Reddit thread for this week's episode, um, there was one gripe that I noticed pretty regularly surrounding the veiled dolls. Apparently, the way that they introduced it into the anime here was much earlier and in a different manner than they do in the manga. So uh -huh. um, it does look like there are some some liberties being taken. Um, but nothing yet that's been too drastic, but it was something that I did commonly notice. So mm. something to, well, uh, I guess, keep in mind and hopefully not, you know, let it deter from our kind of enjoyment that we've been having from the anime. But it's definitely something I think when we talk later about Tokyo Revengers, it'll be kind of an interesting discussion of, you know, keeping things oh, true okay. to the source material. Um, I'll, I'll also say too, um, uh, I wonder, I don't know, like, what the rule is for the debut like if it's made it sound like if you don't get it sounds like what there's one maybe one person picked for the debut and then if you don't get picked your your dolls get eliminated uh, so yeah there we, was some there was some chatter about that one? Earlier. i don't know if it's well just one. it was kind of implied it wasn't like, like said flat out but it, that was the feeling i think who was it hmm. that was talking during uh, that I think it was Do you remember rum was saying how like oh we don't succeed here like this is just my last chance to be, be anything why bother? Mm -hmm. Like I could be friends with a miracle, but like I'm just we're just not gonna pass anyway. So I and I took it as if like, oh, are they just gonna be like thrown away if they don't see here the debut? Yeah. So I, don't I know. almost feel like nobody can fail. 
because it's like so early on and like such a focused cast of characters like unless the debut is going to last a little bit longer like a few more episodes but yes just, just going off the opening and everything alone like they prominently show you know these five different pairs of shadow figure just, living dolls like i think it'd be way too early to try to write like any of them yeah out. we just don't we don't know the rules but like because but right now like kate and Emilico, they're not doing so well in the debut but i can't see Emilico failing and like and getting like replaced or anything so I don't do know. we know if shadows can fail like can shadow lords be disposed of because honestly they don't seem to be treated mm. all that much better than the dolls like they seem uh, just as I feel good. Like the, yeah that's a good question i feel like there is a different like ranking even for the shadow figure yeah. i just feel like they're well. like there's like you treat like like people sort of like how you went like dispose of you know, like if you fail the test you went like dispose of a person whereas like the doll is more of like a product, so you would just like I feel like you just throw it away if, you, if they fail, mm. and you get re you get like a replacement mm. living doll to maybe debut again of your of your shadow. That's what I think. Yeah, I guess the thing is like we still don't really know like the scale of Shadow's house. Like they've mm. obviously it's, alluded to it being much larger than we know with huge. like Barbie and the yeah. Starberries. Yeah, exactly. So. Mm -hmm. it feels like a city like it fe it doesn't feel like right? just like a house like it feels yeah. like a large community so. yeah it's almost like a a hogwarts i guess and i only mm -hmm. say that because like the the train that's at like the ending and like the whole thing that's in like the snow yeah. globe type focus well, and but... like there's so many living dolls i, I can't imagine it'd be like shadows for all of them unless it is unless that's why the house is so big because there's that many shadows that come i don't from. think oh, there are shadows for each of them. yeah i was gonna say yeah. maybe you just could regulated to like the cleaning crew then maybe it's just like that sounds like a better life it, i'd rather just be a cleaner just do my cleaning and be done for the day like rum may it sound <laughs> yeah. so like made it sound so bad like if you don't get it made it sound she may she implied that it sounded like you get disposed of so i'm just going with what she said so i'm curious yeah. to see how the rest rum of the definitely day knows will. more than she's letting on she's kind of serving as this character to further expose like the inner rulings of the shadow house so no, it's just, can we it's, go back to oh, um yeah oh, sorry go ahead no, no, you go ahead um i was just gonna say can we go back to uh, what are their names mia and sarah, sarah? Mm -hmm. yeah what okay so did i see that right did she go in and ask her shadow master to beat her is that how that happened because she like basically like she was I think reading it's more of like and she walked in and she's like i want to get better i want to learn more and then her master beat her right I that's think, i don't think it's just her willing asking i think she she expects it to happen. So I think it's, it's, yeah, it's just happened so many like, times where it's like, you come back, it's like, all right, beating time. Like, it, words don't need to be like, said. That like, just is the relationship. It's probably, they... like, in the beginning, she probably, like, I don't know. What's the word? Like, she probably um, did it first, and then, like, like yeah, I find that, which, which who was who, but, like, the doll probably was caught off guard, and then, like, the the shadow probably, like, like beat her first and says, like, this is what you sh should be expecting. And then she just got like, got trained in that way. So then like, that's what she expects from now on. That's what I took from that. Yeah. I just realized we haven't talked about like, uh, Luis and Lou, that pair. They're so cute. <laughs> yeah. Where they're kind of like the cutesy, you know, <laughs> Luis is explaining, oh, your shadow should be, you know, like a nickname of yourself. So that's why you have Luis and Lou. And then, you know, her doing the makeup and stuff. And then, you know, she touches her and gets like the sudden, she's like, oh no, like we have to redo yeah, well, it. So it's like, like. Her, like Luis and and like and John are like they're like the most normal shadow of all of them. So yeah, they're definitely a more a more healthy kind of uh, relationship between yeah. the two. But mm -hmm. I guess I was trying to think to go back quickly to <laughs> Sarah and Mia. Um, I guess this is the assumption then like when I can't remember either day they which one's the doll or not. <laughs> but when when the doll comes back and she opens her room and she sees like all of like the soot marks yeah. everywhere. Is the assumption and then, that like and now that stuffed animal ripped apart too? It yeah, is the assumption well. that like when the doll <laughs> is gone, like Sarah's just like fucking up her room, or is it that like even at night, like she goes in there and she's beating the shit? I don't like, know. Out of this doll. I, I don't know. Like that's like part of the mystery is like what's the deal with the two of them? Like, or why? Yeah. Why is like, yeah, why is the shadow so like, like I like have so much animosity against yeah. this doll. I can kind of see. I feel like, like we're really only seeing the tip of the iceberg with like these the, two. Yeah. <laughs> the scene we saw with her like beating her, the doll, I can see, I can kind of see that as like as like this shadow really just treats her as like a product as a thing. So I can kind of yeah. see where Mas master and servant. Where is that? Where's like but the whole like mess up the room part? I don't get that thing. Like I don't 
understand what's the point or what's like yeah her, right what's her it's almost goal. like some some jealousy of some sorts in a weird way but like taylor said definitely have only touched the tip of the iceberg and it's done a damn good job of you know really making you curious as to like what the hell is going on here <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i love this show i like it a lot yeah it's sad that it's it's still pretty low in the rankings i know i just looked else. at the score and it was like seven something i was like yeah. this show is like I mean, okay, everybody has their different tastes, but for me, this is like oh. easily my favorite show of the. From, well, I, I don't know, it's I, this or Two Year Eternity, but I think I actually like this more than I Two Year Eternity. For me, it's like, I don't know, like it's just not my type of show, so I can understand mm -hmm. like other people's. Like, I wouldn't rate it that low, but like I, I can understand how um, it's not like yeah, everyone's cup of tea. So, like, I think like just the more I think it's a, it's an interesting like dynamic. For I th sure. I think like I'm just like some people could probably find it too cutesy. I think like, the slice of life thing is just like it's just like stuff. it doesn't fit in with me. Just like because I want to see more of the creepy stuff, but I just feel like fair. I guess I mean I know it's meant to like they're, they're meant to conflict with each other, the slice of life and the creepy stuff. But like I think I think if I was reading the manga, it it'd be like it would um like the creepy factor would sink in more just because like I feel like it's leaning too much on the slice of, slice of life. But that's just. That's my opinion, so. I feel like the marketing for the show wasn't super fantastic. Like, if Justin yeah. hadn't said that he was watching it, and if he hadn't comp specifically compared it to The Promised Neverland, I never would have touched this show. Because, speaking of cutesy things, the second I saw the cute girls on the front, done. I would have passed on it just <laughs> from that. And then, like, number two, even if I did get to the PV, I thought the PV looked pretty, like, amateur. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, on top of that, like, the slice of life tag. I don't see this as a slice of life at all, like, in any capacity. Because, like, if you were to see it, if you were to, like, again, compare it to Promise Neverland, there's times where they're just doing laundry or, like, playing hide and seek or whatever in that show, too. It gets less as the show progresses, admittedly, and they know what's going on. But, like, they had those elements there, too. But that is not a slice of life. No, and I feel but... like this one hasn't gotten as dark as that yet, but I feel like it's leading I up still... to possibly being that I dark. I still kind of see it as, like, supernatural slice of life. So. Really? Yeah. I, just, I don't know. I've seen, there's, like, there's plenty of, like, at least mangas where it's, like, where it's just, like, people living normal lives, but it's, like, in a supernatural setting. But even though there's a lot of creepy stuff happening here, it's all, like... It's half and half, so but I can see like mm. I still describe it as like as a half slice of life. Mm. Got it. Yeah. But yeah, we will see where we go from here. Quite yeah. a lot of the mystery. Yeah. So 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 even though it's like I'm not I don't have it highly as right as you guys, but I'm still enjoying the show and I'm still looking forward to everything and like especially like the lore, like the background and all this. Like I'm really interested in figuring all mm -hmm. that stuff out. So I'm really excited sure. for the rest of the show. So cool. that's going to be it for Shadow House. Uh, let's move on to our next show. Let's talk about Vivi. Ooh, baby. Hmm. It's uh, not like the time skip, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought, yeah, this episode was annoying. This one was yeah. bad. I really don't like this new Vivi. Or, I'm sorry, I mean... Uh, or not new one, like, but just the fact that there is some malfunction or, like, reboot or that just, occurred. Oh, dude, I, I think it's going to be basically, like, something to do with trauma from that, that kill or when that yeah, guy killed yeah. himself. I think it's basically going to be mm -hmm. something with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For that, sure. that ending of the last week's episode didn't throw her yeah. in for a loop. Uh, I don't know what else would, to be honest. It felt like this was just a waste of time. Like, yeah. like yeah, almost agreed. like a filler. Like, why did mm -hmm. you have to reset it? Like, this in this... Yeah. Uh, it's almost as if like the, uh, you, you didn't want to do a, a filler, so you just you just did this. I don't know. The only thing that stood out to me that could feasibly be useful for the like going forward is uh, Mashimoto, like how he how he really did not want to tell her who she was. Like he really just wanted her to like back off, and he wanted to like do the mission without her. Hmm. That, I mean, mm -hmm. that could maybe mean something, but um, that's the only thing I could think of. And then I guess whatever's going on with that other singer girl who wants to commit oh, suicide. Ophelia. Oh, Ophelia. Ophelia. Yeah. Like they didn't yeah. even, they didn't even tell us like what changed since the last episode. Like what like like cuz usually they they well, say they, like, they, they hinted a little bit at like the metal float thing uh -huh. and how this uh this zodiac competition came about to uh further relation uh further oh, okay. grow the relationship between human and AI. I was gonna say it's usually yes. it's like they say like oh like AI has advanced this much because of what happened, but I didn't really get that sense mm -hmm. this episode, but I guess I was. Oh, I, I think 
I think it might be because they're focusing on trying to get uh, Vivi back to how she originally was because we still haven't figured out what's happened in the time frame since she's rebooted herself. We don't even know the time frame, really right? different person. No. Yeah, well, she's 61, so. she's 61 years, years, years old now, so we, it's definitely a, a long time. Oh, God. We Why could they just talk, man? Yeah. Fuck, man. Do, do we know how old she was when, like, the show started? The metal or? float? Oh. No, because she's 61, so it's like, that's how you would tell how much time passed with you could probably yeah. tell. You just got to look at the year. You can go back. Because okay. the year was mentioned in the beginning. And, I guess. Yeah. Like, small details here and there. Mm. Um, like, things don't really... I mean, like, the way that the time skips are, like, I mean, we have some technical, logical advances, but they don't really change that much in the world besides more of what the relationship between AI and humans, so... Yeah, I think it's, this is my first episode. I have not liked a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Sorry, Justin, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, to refresh my memory, was the guy that um Vivi saw at the rehearsal mm. is that the same guy from last week's episode, the Toke? See, he said, he said he was no. young. He said he was yeah, young. He was young. Really, he looked yeah. young and he looked different. Maybe his so kid. Like, yeah. Who the hell is maybe, this guy? Yeah. It might be his descendant in a sense. Yeah. I feel like it has um, to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe we you, just you feel like it have to be what? Like who wait, who a is descendant, it? Like a oh, son descendant. or or something. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a yeah. lot more sense because I was like, if this was a big enough time gap, like that guy that she saved at the metal float that you know she's always been saving I, I, in all these events, like that guy's gotta be old as hell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. like that that flashback was fuck way back in like the earlier times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on well, the first episode. I, so I should have gone back and just like paused it to see that like quick flashback that they did uh -huh. to be like, all right, who the hell is this guy? But no, that was something where I was just thinking like. What the hell is this guy <laughs> like? Man, if it is a descendant, like I would have to back you guys up now. When you were saying that it's convenient that that tote guy always shows up, and I was like, right? yeah, but I mean, it works. I understand. No, no, no. If this really is a descendant, and now he's constantly showing up for <laughs> these, that's taking it too far. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like know really almost... much. Yeah. Sorry, what were you gonna say, Justin? I, I no, I was just gonna say like it definitely the. Almost like the weakness in the writing is starting to show. Where it's mm. like, we've kind of been saying, like, okay, we knew a few episodes ago, like, they're following this, like, you know, event, time skip, explanation mm. of what led to this next event, you know, time skip, blah, blah, blah. And we're just, like, doing that over and over now. And yeah, I, was, I don't know. I was willing to follow that for a while, but this one was just really mm. weak. Like, they just, mm -hmm. just, it was just a reset for no reason. And they didn't really build it up this episode. So that's why I just felt like a waste for this episode. I can't, I I can't stand her new personality too. Like I've never hit snapping so much before in my life. <laughs> oh, I think it was that <laughs> yeah. snapping. She's just very, she's very oh, diva esque yeah. now to yeah. the core, where you know. <laughs> yeah. well, Jesus. I will say too, though, that for a show that's supposed to be about like singer AIs, I feel like the music in this show sucks. Like the only, <laughs> the only well, song that I liked well, was when Grace sang her song in the last episode. Idol. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it fits yeah. what it's supposed it's, to be. Yeah. Oh my god. It's so freaking generic. <laughs> yes, that is that is J pop. <laughs> it's, it's because like, yeah, it's I don't know. Or idol. Well, this is why I don't watch I, idol shows. I'm so. a little surprised in the sense, at least from from Ku's feedback of uh I thought you would have liked this week's episode, Ku, just with you know having Ophelia that is more of that kid character, and now it's like, oh, they're about to kill off a kid. And I know you said you adamantly hate when you know they bring kids into the equation and oh no 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 you don't maybe... no what kid, kid characters not kid ai characters sorry i i you know <laughs> hey it Forgive is me for for treating ais as, as humans of course we can never we have that's what feelings to, too cool that's, that's what we're trying to prevent in the show justin come on give it the program <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh, I mean, you're just so intolerant boomer yeah. Because it's it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I, I guess for me, I feel like if they're too innocent, like they don't know any better, it's unfair, right? When it's unfair, that's when it triggers me. But when they're an AI and apparently she's like a pop star idol, she's really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, even her herself, she doesn't, I mean, I guess that's why she wants to commit suicide, right? Is She doesn't even seem to want to go on anymore. So if that's the case, it's it's kind of hard to, to feel sympathy towards a character, you know? Or, and then, or yeah. Or, or, or she's supposed to have like the the feeling where like Vivi is so much better than her and like she'll never be like that good. Is it kind of like one of those things? That's, that's what I'm her? thinking. I feel yeah, like it's almost going to be that the reason for her suicide is because of Vivi in a yeah. weird way. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I was thinking too. I don't know. All roads are leading back to Vivi. Yep. Vivi is not this great, you know, 
blue eyed, you know, character that just wants to sing for the world. I think, again, you know, the event that caused the mass conflict between human and AI, where they just go rogue and start killing everyone. I think Vivi's going to be very central to that. That's yeah. what I told Trenton last week. I was like, after after she she had like that malfunction after the guy shot himself, I was like, man, I think she's going to be evil or she's going to be critical or something. Uh, something definitely popped out. Like something unnatural. Something unnatural. I want to say unnatural is the word I'm looking mm. for. Yeah. Uh, and it definitely gives me the vibe that what if Vivi was like, I forgot the name. I think it was called Looper. Or like, what if she was the cause of everything and then she sent someone back to kind of Oh, yeah. re- repeat the process over and over you know like yeah. it's getting to this very cliched point of the story where you can kind of tell what's going to happen and that you know oh she was the cause of it all, all along you know yeah. yeah yeah i think i think we've kind of mentioned it multiple times or multiple yeah. times where we, we did, kept thinking yeah. like it's gonna yeah it's gonna we lead did, to something we did like that, that very early in this series so. yeah mm-hmm. yeah it'll just be right. interesting to see matsumoto's involvement moving forward because it is almost like you know from this week's episode something did change with him where obviously whatever caused the malfunction with vivi he was kind of just like all right I'm, I'm not involving her anymore and it's like okay is it just because of the malfunction or did matsumoto potentially learn more stuff about that malfunction where he's just like yeah i can't trust vivi like i don't want to work with vivi anymore hmm. so for some I- reason so I have two questions for you guys. One, do you think whenever Matsumoto disappears and they do this time skip, like, is he going back to the future to see how it played out, right? Like, what changes they made? And then the second question is, do you think that Matsumoto is evil, still evil, or is he turning a new leaf after everything that's been going on? I mean, uh, I believe that he he is just, like, he he's doing what he's saying, basically just staying out of the picture as much as possible, just hmm. to not mess up with anything more of the timeline. Because what we've seen of him... He he definitely wants to like stick with uh, basically with with whatever happens. Like he wants to stick with the timeline that or that that changes like where you know, um, AI doesn't kill everybody. So I, I feel like because there's nothing that's really made me change like that belief in him. So like hmm. in every AI movie, it's always like it's always like the AI just follow the instructions. They don't know what's good or yeah. evil. So yeah, so that's I why just, I think I just think like he just he just does he doesn't know. Yeah, I don't see, his job I don't see him anymore cool. being the divergence. It's now much more obviously Vivi. <laughs> that's the one that at the beginning was very hesitant to diverge, and now everything that we've been shown through all these episodes is her accepting divergence or, or going off the script in some way or another. Yep. So I was just um to say too, uh, like a lot of the earlier episodes, like they did, were they were they keep like um at least trying to tackle the. the the issues of AI about like if they have like like feelings or soul or whatever and this I was thinking this episode too just like we didn't get any of that so that's like yeah one thing I was like really interesting about the show and I was like yeah we didn't get any of that this episode so again just I keep saying it just feels like a waste this is just yeah this is just a bad episode no, like, I, I, I just hate the new video. yeah I'm just gonna say this just as a, as a one off and just wait for the rest so yeah, yeah well I it's agree. gonna be a continuation next episode then hopefully they just get out of this and go back to like you know everything back to normal. Mm. Is, this, to normal, is this 12 huh? or 13 mm. episodes? As much as possible. Uh, uh, 13. 13, okay. Yep. Well, at least it's not too short. My yeah, God. Halfway ma- through. Ma- imagine it was 11 and it pulled off this shit. I mean, I don't have to throw <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But we other than that, though, yeah. I really I don't, don't know. Vivi, Vivi's grown too big for her damn britches. Because that's also been something we've seen every episode. Every episode, she's always like getting bigger and bigger as a pop star. Somehow, yeah, she got, somehow. She, somehow. She got huge hey, this you, time. Got, you got sixty years yeah. to build up, right? Yeah, she's no longer at you know the theme park doing her little side shows. We're not, it's we're like, not oh, just now a she's scrappy little out. band, yeah. right? We got sixty years of experience. How long have we been doing this podcast for? Two years. We've just got like fifty nine left. <laughs> <laughs> a year and a half. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh. All right, but yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up there for Vivi. So we'll see how this continues. Let's move on to our next show. Let's talk about eighty six. Oh, this is God. the show for me. That's it's jumped up. I thought this show was gonna be, you know, very trope, run of the mill, but this was a spicy episode. <laughs> oh my God, aliens, guys, aliens. That's <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm totally getting like alien AI vibes from this. Really. I wasn't going that route, but I was more oh, so just like, 
No, no, aliens, guys. Think about it. They they take the the brain of the dead people and they plug into the robots, and then they're looking for like these, like these perfect commanders, right? These shepherds, and like I can't think of like I think more like zombies. Of how this would work? Zombies? All I could think of Koo the entire time you were talking about about aliens. All I could think about was the actual meme of the guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> like it's like it's like everywhere. I swear. <laughs> All right, someone caught it. Thank God. <laughs> but no, I mean, if you really think about it, right, it can't really be zombies because it would have to be an intellectual zombie. And either it's, yeah, it's like, like a robot zombie. Robot They're taking zombie. brains yeah. of dead people and implanting them into, you know, their army. Like so, the, the... A- AIs, I guess. Yeah, it's AI. I, I don't know. Yeah. 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 It's AIs. So, like, I'm I, say aliens. So, <laughs> I thought this, I thought the way the episode was leading to, I thought, like, when he was hearing the voices, I thought it was gonna be like, oh, there's actually other people in the Legion army. So it is like mm-hmm. both like both humans fighting each other. But then they said, oh, it's more AI. So that's what. So I I was wrong on that yeah. point, but I and still. So, oh, go ahead, Justin. Her, no, I was just gonna say not to completely go on a different tangent, but the brother of Shin, they said they're from the country. Yeah, they're from the that empire created the Gyan. AIs, right? Yeah, yeah. Empires of like Giad or whatever. Yeah, Giad. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Did they okay. specifically say that, or did they just say that they were from a neighboring country? They said the Empire. That's of, what I'm trying like, to confirm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I had at least okay. remembered. Okay. But I also do remember your point, Taylor, when they were talking about it. It's like, oh, yeah, we came from, you know, this other country. Hmm. But, yeah, but I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he said, like, Empire of Giyad is where they're from. Yeah. So, so then I guess, like, the next thing for me at least was so like with with this big drop of information that you know there are now brains within these select um uh like units of this this Giat army um mm-hmm. i'm totally now in the theory mill that lena's dad is potentially one of these shepherds or shin's brother is a shepherd i think oh, it's definitely sure a shoe in that his brother I'm is pretty, yeah. Yeah. i was pretty sure more brother. the brother yeah okay. i think that we- I think Shin even her. knows that, right? Isn't that Shin? Isn't that what Shin's trying to do? Is basically get it yeah, back. That's what I. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. Oh right, because he was saying, you know, about the body and trying to get it back, and he was mm-hmm. like, well, "What do you mean he's dead?" And then he didn't really yeah. mm-hmm. allude to what what he meant. I don't think Lena's father is a candidate yet because you know if you can like you have to like, uh, Shin can can hear the voices of these black sheep, right? Mm-hmm. So since like we haven't heard of his voice yet, I. Don't think he's a shepherd or like one of the black sheeps, but maybe he's one of the guys that's further back. Like mm-hmm. maybe he just hasn't heard him yet because he hasn't come close enough. But but definitely for sure, Shion's brother is uh, a black sheep or shepherd because at the very end you did hear his voice. So oh, I didn't even hear. I didn't yeah. catch that uh, detail. I just remember so. the scene yeah. where he's he's at the locker and then he remembers the flashback where his brother is choking him and he removes the scarf that shows like the basically his head yeah. like, just chopped off or something. He has this huge scar. Mm-hmm. So, no, I, I I was super excited this episode with that, like, you know, big plot reveal and everything. And that got me fully back in because I just yeah. thought this was going to be your run of the mill. Like, you know, war is bad. Shit sucks on both ends. Let's work together to make, you know, a brighter future. And now it's just like, nope, we're taking human bodies, brains, throwing them in these damn things. And mm-hmm. we got a whole new, you know, yeah. tactic. The other big psychological thing, warfare. The other big thing, too, is, is like how, yeah, like, um, they have the, the revolution, like, there's this huge army build up. So it's like, they're so like the republic is so screwed so i just like that's like another that just adds on to like the tension of like okay you, you, like like i guess like the 86 knew this all along but like no one at no one in like the republic is taking them seriously so how are they gonna resolve all this what's lena gonna do is everyone gonna take her seriously and just like and now we just we have this we don't understand that you know it's not gonna end in two years like everyone think it is so it shouldn't clarify if all of the 86 are aware of that because he's the only one that can hear the voices. I don't know about all so the 86, that... but it's like he knows it, and I'm pretty sure like everyone at his yeah. camp knows it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think with the way that with the way that the relationships are between like them and the Albus, I don't think like 86 knows of this. Like mm. there's like they have the heads so far up their ass to you know, oh yeah, in two years this war's gonna be over, we got this, all these soldiers are gonna retire. Like if no one's like telling them, hey, they got a backup plan, they're not gonna die in two years. I think they're really just going like unless Lena and Shin does something, I, I really think they're gonna be screwed after two years. 
Yeah. It almost seemed like, apart from Shin, who, you know, now is gaining this, like, I guess, trust almost in Lena to reveal, like, the true knowledge that they have. It's almost like the mm-hmm. 86 are kind of just like, like even Shin was saying, you know, all of the older generations, like, they're dead. It's pretty much just child- children soldiers now, and they're pretty much yeah. just like, fuck, you know, the Republic. And they're just like, yeah, mm-hmm. you guys can all burn in hell. Well, it's so it's end. almost like, you know, they know these things, and to your point, Ku, like, they're not telling them because they're just like, yeah, fuck you guys. Like, we're going to just, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, at the, it's almost weird because it's like at the expense of their lives dying first, they're uh-huh. okay with it because they know the Republic's just yeah, going to get fucked because they're next. Mm. Yeah. So. Just out of curiosity, Justin, are you liking Shin anymore? Because I know you were not a huge fan of I'm his like, character. I'm liking beginning. him more now. Um, <laughs> I think he's still, you know, like, it's the typical, you know, like, protagonist from the other side that just everything kind of revolves around him. And I think that's fine because, you know, it has to at the end of the day. Um, but I, I am really intrigued in, like, the relationship with his brother and specifically, you know, the events that are leading to his brother basically strangling the shit out of him and the scar and everything like that. I want to see what unfolds. Dude, if, if Shin turns out to be a ghoul, I'm going to lose it, man. Because with a scar like that, how did he survive? Yeah, that's what Even I'm wondering, right? Himself, like, oh, I'm already dead. I don't know how I'm still yeah, alive. So hopefully it doesn't go too far off the rails. But, I mean, the fact that they're taking brains and putting them in these things, like, anything's yeah. fair game now. <laughs> I, I mean, actually, uh, if he if he, if there, he was some sort of undead thing, that would kind of make sense with the fact that he's the only one that survived. Him, right? Or, yeah. So, Wait, oh yeah, I guess. Well, yeah. Just, yeah. Are, you, are you saying like they're, take, they're taking like live brains and like putting it in the machines? Is that what you think? Yep. No, that's, oh, what that's, that's, that's what they're doing. That's, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. I thought it was more like they just analyzed the brain and they, they no. put it into like no. uh, oh, well, okay. That's the so that's why the thing of why I thought Lena's dad might be a candidate because I'm pretty sure in this episode they showed that he died from being like impaled or some shit. And right. when Shin was explaining it, he was saying like they need a like perfect brain. It can't be a brain that's damaged in any way. Mm-hmm. Okay. so that's what i was I thinking thought, i thought it's because... either gonna be lena's dad that they like took from that scene or it's gonna be shin's brother okay, that through right. somewhere or another they this... acquired his brain i thought this whole time it was, it was more like you just took a brain you analyze it in a lab and then you upload it to like an internet or you upload it to like a machine and then like i thought it was like all go digital back, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they need it like the they may product. upload it but well, it with can't, short, they, need, really. they need a brain yeah, yeah i don't need one. a brain but okay i didn't realize it was like the brain was in the machine. I thought it was like they. I mean, we, oh, I maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, we don't know for sure. Maybe that could be part. Maybe we're we're just just like, like, more of it. Not goddamn like psychopaths. Yeah, that's all, guys. Thought, aliens. That's, that's all we need to know, guys. Aliens. Like, yeah, where like it was like they uh, they analyze. Okay, I need to look at the details, but imagine if this it's still show pretty is just related to psychopaths just, now. Just oh the, whole, the whole concept is oh, just God. still creepy. They got a facility though. of just brains, and then those brains control the entire army. <laughs> I gotta admit, like, in, in the last five minutes of this episode, the plot became so convoluted, I don't know what to think anymore, to be honest. Uh, we, we need, like, a few episodes for them to kind of explain how it works. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of material to work with, yeah, with the light Because I, uh, I use as, like, yeah, they're, they're adapting the first, like, the light novels really well like they haven't really skipped much compared to like mm-hmm. other shows which usually where everyone always complains about like things being cut out doesn't sound like that's what's happening here so yeah the, oh, the last happy. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing i'll say for me and, and this isn't related to the story but and maybe i just haven't picked this up but have have recent uh previous episodes when they do a transition into the ending song are they mm-hmm. always transitioning like a still frame into like that like water painting style? I don't remember. I really liked it. I, I think really liked done it once. Okay, I really liked time. it in this in this week's episode when Shin is walking down the stairs and you have the moon like outside the window and then it just snaps, you know, right into the ending song mm-hmm. and it has like that, you know, artistic impression of it. I'm just a sucker mm-hmm. for artistic shit, so. Yeah, I think well they did that once before. It, <laughs> it did look yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's a cool way to yeah. build into it. Hmm. But I'm, lo- I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm back in. It's shown me that it's not I'm, your normal run of the mill, overpowered character is going to do everything. <laughs> I, I really want to read the light novel, so I'm still a fan yeah, me too. of the show. Because I stay strong. Runners. Stay strong. Because well, not now, but it's like everyone keeps saying the light novel is really good. So like, <laughs> really curious. I tell you, what, if any of you guys do read ahead and it does turn out to be aliens, please let me know. <laughs> I just, I just want to know, man. Because okay. oh my god, this whole. I got so many questions, man. I need answers. <laughs> that's, that's so oh. many. That's so many shows in general. Are... Again, no, this, this is the... this one in particular. This one in particular. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The only other small detail that I noticed was when um, 
Lena was talking to Annette and Annette was talking about all of these uh, husbands that were being set up for her. And she had the very similar like pictures of them being crossed out. And that reminded me exactly of what we've seen of the 86 where, you know, they drew like all the figures of the commanders that they had in crossing them out. So just drawing mm-hmm. further similarities of like obviously classism and like different kind of rankings is a major focus of the show. But they're really the same at the end of the day and some of their mentalities. I do wish we could get rid of Annette, though. I'm sick of, like, the Groundhog Day effect. Where, yeah, like, the she's just there to be like, hey, show. let's go show this cute, you know, new <laughs> baking here's, item here's that a, we have. Here's a pastry, and also, yeah. don't care about the 86. It won't do you any good. Trust me. Like, we just see that in every episode. It's like, oh, my God, I get it. Yeah. <sighs> she's a, a super weak one-dimensional character, for sure. Well, it's just like when there's so much other plot happening. It's just, like, such a waste of time. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right, we're in it for eighty six, so we'll see. Yes. We'll see if Koo's questions will ever get answered one day. Mm-hmm. Aliens? We'll find out. Ghouls? No way. Yes. All right, no so way. let's move on to our next show. Let's talk about To Your Eternity. I'll just start off in saying this is the show that has really gotten weak for me. I'd say with this latest week's episode. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was not a fan. I felt like nothing really happened. I just want to. The only thing I'll <laughs> Don't say. Don't take his job, Justin. The only That's, thing yeah. I'll <laughs> say <laughs> is like, uh, God, the, I already forget the girl's name. Pan, Pan, something like the older, older girl, like her falling so much in this damn show and not like getting like, injured at all. Just like, just casually just fall down. Like how many stories? Just get back up and fight the guard. Like you know, just you, you, you fell, standing you, on a knife's you, blade. You fell off a you cliff. Know? You got like like mauled by a giant ass bear, and now this. It's like Jesus. Sorry, you're muted, by the way. It. Yeah, I don't know. She's built different. You yeah, know? That's just easy, David. I mean, it's just, okay. another, month. It's just another Tuesday. All right, Strad, we'll leave you. We'll get mauled by a bear and then, and then push off a cliff. We'll, we'll see how you survive that. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay, but it just, it was, it, uh, was it just tuck and roll or whatever? And you're fine. I kind of feel like it's just not like the writing wasn't very good this episode. Like, I didn't mind. I was okay with like not much happening. Like, that was okay with me. Um, but what I wasn't okay with was like, I got confused a couple of times. Like, is the bear alive? Is the bear dead? Are they cleaning the bear for what reason? Are they bringing the bear back or not? How are they going to bring the bear back? Like Um, everything with the bear was kind of confusing to me. And then like, then too, with the wolf, I don't know what else to to call it. Um, like when it turned in, whatever happened at the end of the episode, it's been a week. I already forgot, but whatever happened at the end of the episode, I couldn't figure out like what I was supposed to take from that. And so well, that's what I didn't like more than anything else. Well, the bear's dead. The bear's dead now. The whole thing when now, basically yeah. when the dog said, when uh, the wolf said, you know, thank you. It was basically the bear basically, you know, saying it to the girl and then him being able to uh, like, just understand, interpret and saying thank you to, to kind of March. I don't know if March actually took it that way, but he was basically just kind of thanking her for cleaning him up before he died. I'm guessing was basically you know, pulling out all the arrows and uh, hmm. everything else. When the wolf was saying like itai itai like the entire time, was he translating for the bear then too, or was it was it just because he learned no. a new word? I think it was a new word. Okay. Yeah. Because it was during mm. that it was like the battle arena or whatever where he was getting stabbed. That's where he yeah, by the one guy that he fought against, and then he obviously saw that the other human felt pain, yeah. and he was like, "Oh, there's something yeah. new." <laughs> and then the, the thank you is basically then er, everything got thrown off. Then when the bear. Um, basically said you know thanks i mean it could have been both right because uh, they kind of panned in on it when he said it hurts and thank you uh when uh fushi was in a room with the with oniguma in march so mm-hmm. it, it could be a thing i just feel like fushi's gonna turn into the bear for s- some reason or another i get that feeling too. the hell yeah. out of yeah. this place because the last yeah. scene the last thing where he said when he, he said thank you for the bear isn't that like part of the requirements like you have to have that emotion and then when uh, someone uh, dies, stimulation. Yeah, some stimulation. Intense stimulation. stimulation. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I, mean, I, I hope possible. he gets. Yeah, I hope he gets that ability. Just fucking kill everybody. <laughs> I mean, it is one of his powers. So I would imagine it's a possibility. Yeah. We'll uh, see. I, I just I hate that one chick too. Who? Oh, the girl uh, that drugged them and everything. Yeah, basically, like, dude, she's just fucking like, I, she just needs to go away. Her character design is weird too. Those boots are bizarre. I can't get behind her. I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. She, for for a uh, for a uh, prehistoric girl, she she's kind of cute. 
Not gonna lie. Oh yeah, from like the waist up, but the boots just don't make any sense. <laughs> hey, hey Taylor, eyes up here. For right? me, for me, it's the goddamn <laughs> shoulder pads. Have you seen the shoulder pads she's working with? Oh, I haven't noticed super, the shoulder they're, pads. They're funky. <laughs> oh, now we want to complain about female armor. Okay, they don't have yeah, the most yeah, yeah. options. Okay, <laughs> just be glad she has something. God. Yeah, I just meant I'm just tired. Like just tired of her. Like she just needs to die. <laughs> Bye, Bear. Wow. I don't. I yeah. think she's gonna be around for a while. See, this is another uh, talking about her though. Like, that's another thing that I'm kind of feeling wishy washy about with the show, which is like, okay, when they first show up to the village, it's because they need to take in a sacrifice for this for a deity, and then mm-hmm. that that happens. But then, like, while they're traveling to the sacrificial altar, mm-hmm. one of them makes a comment where they're when they see the bear and they're like, oh shit, it's actually a real thing. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's fine because I totally didn't, I, I mean, I. It's fine if they don't believe in this own religion and they're just doing this. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm hoping that, you know, this next episode is is them going to be just busting out and then we get into, like, some other set of events. I, I'm assuming that's going to be taking place within this city. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, yeah. I feel like the the strength yeah. of the show was just more like the world and just... it Because, like, the first episode, like, it, it it took me in because I wanted to see... I want to see, you know, the wolf and then eventually the guy exploring, but it's just, we're just caught up in like the, just like the politics of like this village and like, and, and, uh, whatever, like, I mean, what the, the two regions, Min, Minna and like, and Yanone, like, like, I just, I don't, it was so important to the story though. I just, I want to know more about like the main character. So. Yeah, I know last week, I think me and Ku were saying how unfortunate what it was that they showed like so many characters and things in the opening, because then we kind of know what's to come. Right. But kind of in an odd way, I'm kind of a little bit reassured in the sense that I, I know there's obviously going to be this much larger exploration that's to come. Mm-hmm. Because if not, then I would be kind of like, well, like, where where are we going next? Because this, this episode was pretty much a lull. We're stuck in a, yes. a, yeah, we're, we're stuck in a village and you know, from the opening, we now know, like, oh, there's about to be all types of crazy shit, like people with magic and like this other like weird dude. And yeah. you got chicks bleeding out of her eyes like mm-hmm. so that that gives hope. But possible time skip, I guess, with uh, <laughs> the the girl hugging what could be an adult march. I mean, who knows? Yeah, right. So I, I feel like there has to be some sort of time skip, maybe just because otherwise, like. Fushi's gonna evolve super slow. Like it's like we said, this mm. man knows Arigato and he knows Itai. Mm. Yep. He, he's a baby, and it's like if he's progressing at the rate of a baby, then either somebody's gonna have to kick that shit into overdrive. Maybe you know March, who's you know saying that she's basically his mother, is gonna teach him things much quicker. But mm. I'm hoping they pick it up because if he learns this slow, it's gonna be like, oh man, yeah, it's gonna be rough. It's, it's kind of rough, like. <laughs> Like you're cool and all, Fushi. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, you you stand up for everyone, but let's uh let's pick it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you guys have felt like it was slow before, but I just took this more as a one off. Like, I'm still interested to see where the story goes. But to, no, to definitely. Ask you, if if I had to pick a next show to drop, this would probably be it. Just because. What? Mm, oh yeah, my god. The first, the first two episodes. I think the pacing was great. It felt very unique. Uh, but from episode three onwards, it's just getting weaker and weaker. And there's not that many things that draw you in, right? I still want to know what's going to happen because of the opener, right? There's so many things that they have lined up for this guy, apparently, that I want to see how it progresses. But to that point is, how long does it take for you to get there, right? For you yeah. to get that payoff. And as of right now, it's 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 not looking so hot. So well, we'll yeah. have to see. I think that was the big thing that I oh, go ahead. If he's able to turn into Oniguma next episode, right? And they bust out, and then I think that'll be pretty cool, right? But I guess again, we'll have to see how it goes from there. It's gonna be another yeah. low, but I just want to see more of the world. Like that's like the thing that brought me in. So yeah, I don't think, the I think that was are, the thing where I don't think the characters are especially strong in this show. So yeah. I went into this show like expecting a Kino's journey type yeah. vibe where like each episode was going to be a very diverse location and new set of characters. Yeah. And right. that would have been really cool in this regard. And now it's like, oh, no, like these are going to be longstanding characters and we're going to get, you know, maybe a few handful more that get introduced specifically in this land. And now that's kind of unfortunate in a way. So. I don't know. 
we'll 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 see. I'm kind of in in Coos camp as well. Like this show definitely dropped a, a good amount for me in terms of like the hype mm-hmm. area. So I'm I'm so invested. So we'll see. I mean, that's why I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously the backing for it, everybody from the source material is like, it's amazing. So mm-hmm. I've, let's just yeah. you know, I haven't paid that, see. but well, we will see. So. I think that's going to be it for to your attorney. Let's go on to the next show. Let's talk about Tokyo Revengers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so now we know how important Draken is. Uh, God, I don't know. Do you guys think he's going to be able to, like, is, is Takemichi going to be able to save him? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Like, I feel like he should be able to, but then I wouldn't be surprised if he's not. So it's hard to make a prediction. I must say... He will. I think. I think. I think that's the way the direction the stories are go. I think they're gonna try to um to change the past dramatically. So I think he will s- somehow like like I think he'll be able to save or at least like get like get him out of the the area where he would be in danger. So. Oh, I don't know how he's gonna do that. They're apparently they're gonna fight against this other group called Mobius. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So it, it's, I don't think as the vice captain of your gang, I don't think there's any way for you to back out of this fight. Like, you have to be there. Okay. Well, and then, like, the bright idea that Takemichi had is, hey, I'll just be his bodyguard, even though I don't have any, you're like, weakest, you're, any you're skills. Fighting, like, you're, ability you're, or you're weak as fuck. Right. Dude, and then, like, oh, my God, I want to just punch the guy so hard, right? How dare he cheat on Hina like that? I don't know <laughs> what happened, but it doesn't look so hot for the guy. But apparently, like, the past, uh, I guess with how how I it can't works. Explain whenever, the time back, travel. Yeah, you can't explain yeah. it. Right? Apparently, he's kind of a dick when he's not like adult. Right. So it's like, what what are you doing, guy? Honestly, yeah. Basically, you're learning Takamichi as he was was a dick and yeah. never really kind of seemed to care for Hina until these events in the future happen and he realizes, like, oh damn, I really did care. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would like to. Sorry, I haven't haven't been here. Just hopping in now, so I don't know what all what all has been said. But one thing that I noticed in the episode was well, the girl that was hovering over him, the one that mm-hmm. he Emma. was yeah. Emma. Emma. Yeah. Um, it's she obviously likes Draken, so she it's it sounded like she had kind of like coerced him into that position a little bit too. Like I feel like it it's not necessarily just a case of like he was outright cheating on Hina. I'm yeah, trying to it, like. It did seem like it was a little bit. Uh... Of a back and forth, you know, he obviously wanted mm-hmm. that to happen, but it sounds like he didn't do anything really to stop it because I, I think he said something along the line of like, oh, you know, no kissing or anything. So he obviously must have brought up something in that regard. I mean, yeah. I think it's, it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things much. But mm-hmm. um, what did you guys think of the whole introduction of the, the Tokyo Manji gang? Because this was the first, you know, real meeting that you get to see oh, where s- again, I'm having trouble you know, keeping, track, gathering. keeping track of all the names. So I had to go through Wikipedia. That's okay. Yep, that's gonna I, be I really, really, I'm like, there's a lot like, of people. Yeah. Out like, there. I made a list game. of everything. Like, you, like you, honestly, you're, you're talking so to hard. the guy who I forgot Draken's name last week, and now it's like, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> it's made even well, worse. They each have the first and last name, depending on their relationship with another character. They'll be referred to by either that first or last name. Then there's their oh, alias. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Did um did any of you guys pick up on the censorship that was in this episode? No. The censorship? No. Okay. And I guess you wouldn't, you know, right? Since I'm the only one that's read the source material. But um, specifically when the gang first arrives, um, the first part is they show the top of the motorcycle engine and uh-huh. they show part of the Manji symbol, but they don't show the full part of it. So that's one part because they don't want to show the Manji symbol because they think people are going to confuse oh, it yeah. with a swastika. And oh. the, the more the more blatant part is when um, uh, Takamichi and uh, Hina first show up and those two other gang members show up and they're just like, who the hell are you? Like, what are you doing here? If you remember the motorcycle lights that are taking up like half the screen, like across the entire screen, like very in like bright yellow. The reason they did that is another censorship because all of the jackets have the wow. Manji symbol on them. And so my fear, and it's a very prominent symbol mm-hmm. in the show and like Takamichi and everybody is going to be rolling with these gang members for a while. So I'm very concerned that like they're going to be doing very weirdly shot or like usage of light in certain scenes. But I'm glad to hear none of you guys really. Like, I mean, I thought it was it. odd, but I thought it was supposed to like put you in the character's view of like how intimidating it would be when you couldn't see the, like the group. Mm-hmm. You have all the bike lights. Yeah, 
They, but why did the author use that symbol? Because like when I was doing th going through these Wikipedia searches and I saw it, I was like, the fuck? Like this is the swastika. I mean, it's it's really an odd choice. Uh, I think if but it's Manji reverse, is... it's supposed to mean something else. Well, Isn't yeah, it? the verse is like but... it's very it's like it's a holy symbol in Buddhism. So it's like you see that a lot in Japan. Like when you look up um, <laughs> temples in Google Maps, it shows the Manji symbols. But then. There's like the cases of people like being pissed at like why there's swastikas in like my Google Maps, so. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's yeah, like yeah. So I, that's, I don't know, what, the I don't, I don't know what, like... what the relationship is to the gang, unless it's like unless mm -hmm. they're tied to like a temple or something or something religious. But I think it's I think it's more beside the behind the sense of you know what Mikey had said in the previous episode where the reason that he's starting this gang is he really wants to carve out this place in life for delinquents to kind of call home so it's almost like you know the unity of it and I think okay. that's more of the direct connection of the Manji symbol in the relation to like Buddhism and all these other things um but that was just something obviously I had noticed you know with that that context that I did have and Reddit was absolutely having a field day up in arms well, with the they're, censorship they're always like done. yeah they're always like but, and, and it is frustrating because it is a big part of the show so mm -hmm. it's now yeah, bringing the question like how are they going to navigate around this and a lot of people actually are trying to write to the studios to say like hey can you change this like who decided that this mm -hmm. censorship needed to be done in like this manner uh, yeah, it's it's like I don't know what their plan is going to be, and if it's really not a swastika, then why is it even censored? Like, who started the censorship train, anyways? You know what I mean? Like, and it's something so that? simple that could be fixed at the beginning of the episode of saying like a just mm -hmm. disclaimer, like, "Hey, yeah. this is what this symbol is. It has no relation to a swastika." Yeah. And it's like you, as a viewer, should be smart enough to be like, "Okay, cool." Mm -hmm. But it's like there's obviously someone somewhere that's just like, "Oh no, this is a PR disaster waiting to happen," and it's really unfortunate. To the source material. I, yeah. I feel like with the way uh, society is nowadays, I can see why they'll be worried about even attempting it. Because if you have someone that's like very ignorant, right? Or they're just like not going to care to do the little research that they need to, they might just look at it the wrong way, blow it up. Yep. And once it's on the news, it's kind of hard it, to recover from it, that. Yeah, it's very, it's, so, it's the really easy route for uh, sure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the full story. So I'm not, I'm not going to say this is what's the case. Like, like people, people in Reddit, especially they got blame. They got blame like the American localizers, but also like Japanese companies. They're very like cautious about this sort of PR thing. Like they hate being with that, that kind of like that kind of like like having to like get the message and all that. They hate having to explain things like that, so they rather avoid it in the first place if they can. Yeah. So I can say either side, guess, either like like the, the American localizers or even even like someone told like the Japanese company like like this could be a problem, and then the Japanese company yeah. like took it on themselves to do that because they didn't want to deal with with it'll issues, be interesting to so. see what they do because i've heard talks that like potentially some versions from like the uh asian side are going to be uncensored potentially moving forward um and i agree totally to your point david like now that it's you know on our coup's point of it's you know now in this anime format that's much more widely accessible in terms of like the way that they're airing it Mm -hmm. it just makes no sense because it's like well okay the manga came out in japan and all these places they didn't do any censorship for that so it's like mm -hmm. why would you censor it something just because it's in an animated format you don't do any censorship with the you know manga uh i guess it's just the the audience it's easier to reach a wider audience with with, with anime i think they knew like, i think when they started the manga they didn't right. like a lot, lot of manga authors they don't they think it's just gonna be japan only so they don't think about this kind of thing when mm -hmm. they made the anime, they probably realized it's got to be, like, reaching a wider yeah. audience. So. I mean, I guess, if anything, I'd have to go back and, like, the only other relationship that I can think of to, like, Nazism is, like, Helsing as a series. And I don't think Helsing did anything to, like, censor things around that. They're just like, no, oh, this is what it is. Like, you're either going to like it or you're not going to like it. And right. for something like this, it's just an unfortunate Plus, thing. But, um... Uh... There's like besides that, there's, like, there's been other times where, like, where Japanese companies are just surprised about the backlash they get. By like by just it's like sometimes it just randomly gets picked up by like random news outlets and they have to deal with the backlash and so it's oh. happened a couple of times in the past like 10 20 years that like that they are aware yeah. they they are aware that like this can go wrong so yeah. again being cautious and again, I, I don't yeah i don't want to so, detract too much i think it's just something that i don't know the i guess i'm gonna either, have to keep yeah, to so. myself until it's like something like really blatant because i do feel like there were some other scenes that from like a cinematography standpoint 
felt mm-hmm. like very awkward cuts like one directly and then we can talk about you know the rest of the, the episode here but um one directly is like when they're panning towards the stairs leading up to the shrine uh-huh. it, there's a very like awkward cut where like you know it's like zooming in and there's like music towards it and then it goes silent and then they just cut to like mikey at like the top of the shrine and everything where like i'm pretty sure in the manga the reason that they do that is it's like all the members heading up the stairs and they have, you know, like the swastika, well, not the swastika, but the manji symbol. And like, mm-hmm. that's something where like, they just did a quick cut. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Some parts just felt like very disjointed. But I noticed that too, me. actually. I rewound and I was like, wait, what happened? Did I miss something? I actually rewound that part because you're right. It was awkward. And there's a part where like Mikey is talking and it feels like, you know, they're building up to this very epic moment. And then it just kind of like goes quiet and it's still like focusing on his face. And then it just cuts to something completely mm-hmm. like different. And I don't know, it just felt a little bit jarring. But uh, uh well, for me, it, like, it didn't bother my viewing experience whatsoever. Yeah. So I, I guess I wasn't paying as much attention. But, same here. Uh, yeah. And I think that's good because Sasha, you know, when I asked him, he had the same exact kind of viewpoint as you guys. And I guess it's it's me now seeing the unfortunate side of knowing like, like the source material. And now that's like bothering my experience of the anime. It's like if you didn't know it, mm-hmm. that's why like you didn't like you wouldn't pay attention to it. It's unless we get to that part later where it does become like very but in this beginning mm-hmm. part like we don't know anything about it so like yeah for sure they don't like they don't like um, hint it that like it's very important besides just the name manji so the Definitely. only the only part that bothered me was at the beginning when they basically said like oh why don't i just tell her that um that, <laughs> that one day. and then and then oh and then my god like, oh you're gonna take the easy way out and, and then he basically was just like implying that she won't even believe you i was like bitch He's fucking dating her. Like I, I was like, yeah, and then he just told her. Brother, like, yeah, you guys are so, yeah, like, I love how Naoto's explanation was just like, oh, the only reason I believed you is because I was into the occult back then. Oh, so fucking. Like, I was just like, oh, honestly, the like, more you guys pointed out, I'm just like, man, like. I must have okay. just breezed that over that when I was reading the original yeah. manga. No, I kind of feel like I actually like the fact that it was in there because I kind of felt like it was like tongue in cheek. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like they know I that know. anybody that reads or watches like, this is thinking that. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. The, reasoning, the reasoning was just fucking terrible. And then honestly, I, I couldn't remember. I, I didn't really remember what happened the rest of the episode. Like that, that shit triggered me so hard <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that I just, it, the rest of the episode was a blur. I felt like really? it was, I, I felt yeah, like well, it was needed. Like, that was so perfectly was... placed. Yeah, I thought it was really it was, good. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. The second half was strong in the sense of, I had completely forgot like when they're introducing, you know, why the Pachin is upset with the Mobius gang is because, you know, the friend's buddy's girlfriend got beaten and raped and all these horrible things. I didn't remember it being like that brutal and graphic of like the explanation and then brutal. the whole scene at the end you know where uh mikey and uh draken go and mm-hmm. visit you know the girl and the father and mother come in and they're just like mm-hmm. you know completely devastated and reaming them for dragging them into that world and mikey you know originally not understanding that and now really seeing the relationship where draken is the heart that mikey you know doesn't really know how to kind of utilize i guess he's very like singular dimension but there's right. reasons for that that will come <laughs> well i mean like they're also like middle schoolers so i can see why like mikey's like naive <laughs> in that way so yeah that's the other thing you feel like it's kind of the crazy older in the sense. yeah they're, older. like they're just middle schoolers and like well, all that's, yeah. that's what i was saying like when like they had that the, the delinquent gang in the beginning it's like the kyo misa whatever or, like you're mm-hmm. supposed to be like like a third year middle school student okay yeah He's supposed to be 14, 15. Yeah, it's, it's whatever, man. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I've always found, like, gang representation in anime and manga specifically <laughs> to be pretty freaking weird. Like, I don't know, a lot of gang stuff here, like, if you'll see media about it here in the States, a lot of it has to do with, like, drug trafficking. You know, they kind of spring up around those types of businesses. But, like... Okay, we Ku, we watched that one show. Oh, Ikebukuro. We watched Ikebukuro. <laughs> or like, which like oh, they were ballet that. dancers who like help their community. Like, I don't know. I just couldn't understand. Like, what about you makes you a gang? What is your purpose? I don't get it. And then, even like Fruits Basket, for example, like the main character's mom had been part of a gang when she was younger, but like all they did was skip school and like hang out. <laughs> but like, they were like a gang. gangster boys. Yeah. So oh, we skip school. <laughs> there's this one and i i mean i i don't want to say it's a good thing but like when i did hear that there are actual things that happen with other gangs there's like turf wars i haven't heard a reason yet like why they all exist but i mean at least they're acting like 
a gang, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, but the fact that they're all middle schoolers, eh? What? It's just added. I mean, whatever. At least there's like a reason for what they're doing, I guess. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, um, yeah. I don't have much yeah. else to say. So, I'm really there for talk of Avengers. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Justin doesn't go too crazy from. No, I, I'm also going to try to keep myself more reserved for. I, I'm sure this was the first time. You know, obviously. It's pretty not blatant because obviously for you guys, none of you notice it and wouldn't notice it as a first time viewer. But hmm. I guess that's good. I'm I'm happy to see that the show is still going well for people that are animated. Uh, the one thing I want to say is like, man, I was hoping that like something will happen in the pre- some, like someone would have like done the thing where something inexplicable happens and they say, oh, obviously because you went time traveling in the past. I wanted to like say some sort of joke with that, but it didn't happen. So. I missed it. Like, well, I feel like they're not gonna do that. I know. I mean, they already they already kicked off one of the the plot holes with that joke in the beginning, so I'm sure it might come in later as well. Maybe. Could be. Could be. Yeah. But that's gonna be it for Tokyo Avengers. Let's move on to our next show. It's like My Hero Academia. Oh, I called it, boys. Two episodes per match. Oh man. All I'll say, best part of the episode was, um, oh my god, Lita? what's the Shoto Endeavor and him being upset that Shoto wasn't responding to his text messages <laughs> oh, and him just being like a uh, complete dad moment. That was the pinnacle of this episode for me. That was only a part. Everything else Agreed. I didn't care about. Agreed. What? <laughs> totally you agree. think it was like badass when Lita had to pull off his own mufflers to? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that part too. Those yeah, oh, yeah. two, two parts. Those two parts. Oh, good, dude. <laughs> I mean, apparently he's he's half half man, half car. Yeah, that was uh, like, oh, I gotta make sure my 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 fuel consumption is like at a minimum, and now I gotta put my output at at like max. And it's like, this, this guy must be like half man, half car, because that shit doesn't make sense. Like, even if it's a quirk, <laughs> like, how does that how does that work? Man, man, just growing mufflers out of his legs. Yeah, like, how does that work? Oh my, mind blown. Mind yeah, yeah. Blown. like. God, it, it sucked more too when um, at the beginning of it we're like, oh, we're gonna take like a like a was it like a two hour like uh, when they when because they, like they had to like move like where they were doing it because everything oh, was like trash. Break? Oh, the or... location. Yeah. yeah, they were they, basically they were have, taking like a break. I'm thinking like motherfucker, like we're going slow enough. We don't need like a break <laughs> like, for this stuff. Yeah, it, was... it's just like please just just get through this. I was trying I was trying to pay attention because my boy Toroki was in this round, but. You didn't really do yeah, much they're, either, so they're they're losing to trash too. At the way, by the way, yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll it looks like Todoroki might know prominence burn or uh, something like that. Something yeah, some sort of new move, some secret move. So we'll, we'll Dude, see. They're, they're losing to like a cow chick with like boomerang horns. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, oh, <laughs> oh my god! Why are these people here? You need to just go away, like. Hey man, uh, she's just a chance. <laughs> she wants, just, she wants that okay. that 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 exchange, Japan exchange student life. All right. Oh, she's she's should she should be basically like in whatever class that uh that Shoto's in or not not Shoto um Shinzo is in. Shinzo. Because oh. yeah, it's it basically like like I'm pretty sure Shinzo could beat her like like even way back like way back in the day. And then yet yeah, somehow she's still like ranked in a higher class than him. What the fuck? Oh, so threatened then. You were complaining about the mushroom girl last week, but horns is definitely horns is terrible. Worse horns is actually yeah. horns is worse. Yeah, it's like, really bad. It, even I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Still, still my, my least favorite though is the comic smash guy. Like I thought, it, 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 the dumbest fucking quirk in the world. Like no, it, no, he's not that bad. There's he's like a thought that, that, that went into no. it. It's kind of unique. She like, just has horns. Okay, that see, out. okay. The thing is, like, I'm trying to sp- like, I'm trying to bring in like logic into a fucking hero academy with quirks, where basically it's like you just like yell comic words. It's like, okay, sure. How does that actually work with the chick with horns? Sure, but it's like you know, I've, I watched Digimon. You know, they, they, they shoot <laughs> horn off and it grows okay, immediately. That's your Whatever. logic. That's my logic. Yeah. I mean, the fact I'm that not, the fact I'm that not... the girl with the horns doesn't bother you as much as the comic guy is kind of surprising because that shit makes less sense than the comic book. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, like they both like I hit them both. They're both at like <laughs> they're, they're, they're both at like ninety nine, ninety eight. I'm not like, gonna lie. I, I kind of tuned out whenever the comic guy was on screen, so I actually don't know what he does. But but what he could have had for a power boom. is he could have been like that guy from Jujutsu Kaisen. Like when you talk, you know what I mean? It's like a spell oh. almost. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> do, you, do you know that yeah. like that? No, <laughs> not <laughs> as good. He's he's the bargain. The the, the bargain he's, 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 he's like the dollar store variant. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh, like, man, <laughs> nah, that's like it's like oh yeah okay. Well, so <laughs> I know we didn't have Brian on last week. So oh. Brian, where where are you at with this season of My Hero so far? Man, fuck this season, man. <laughs> I, honestly, this is like, what I'm thinking, yeah. right? Like, uh, like <laughs> if you're gonna be an anime only watcher, I would a hundred percent so far just. Mm-hmm. Let the season finish and then binge it all the way through, yeah. And, yeah. and then yep. get to the next season. If yep. you're, if you don't care, just I'd honestly just, I'm really hard considering just reading the rest of this like season and then just waiting. Like, like I was so triggered last week, Brian. I didn't even reach out to you. I was like, "There's absolutely no <laughs> point." Like, like I, I don't know if you listen. To, I, I don't know if you listen to our bit, but holy fuck, <laughs> I didn't think like uh, Hero Academia could get any lower than that episode. Uh, this isn't much better, but it's not good. I mean, this is definitely a step up. I know, we're all just like, <laughs> uh, so we're, are we doing my hero now? Because like, I'll be real, I think we have at least four to five more episodes of this. Oh, if I had to be, like, oh generous. No way. Okay, cool. Okay, like, okay, like, we just like started the one with um, Ida and Todoroki. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we have the other two. We have Bakugo. And then we have... Yeah, then we have Midoriya. Yeah. Then we have Midoriya. Yep. yeah. Cool. When you when you say so step up, man, I just think of like... episode, probably. But, but they get better. They're better than what we're watching. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Like, the later because, fights are much better. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm going to be honest. Any fight is better than this shit right now, okay? <laughs> I don't care when or what it's been, but any fight is better than this shit. <sighs> no, but but like I said, like c- compared to like the last two or three episodes, uh, there wasn't really much hype, right? Maybe it's because it's not characters that had been like given the limelight as much as others, like say the Invisible Girl or even uh, Toku- Tokuyami, right? Uh, they haven't they've been kind of cast aside, so there's not much emotional attachment to them. But you got like main hitters like Todoroki and Lita, and the fact that you know they're they're showing these flashbacks and showing that there's a potential new move that's on the way. That gets you a little hyped up, and it's characters that you kind of care about. So maybe that's why I feel this way. Oh, I mean, there's, I don't say, I still don't think there's going to be an episode any lower than the one <laughs> the week before this one. Mm. That yeah. one, I think, is by far as as bad as you can possibly get. I mean, and because uh, yeah. this one, like, at least you said, cool, like, you know, it's Todoroki. We, we well, at I mean, least have uh, at one. least like, like, yeah. like Tokuyami, like, at least the, like his character got developed. So that was nice, but let's just like everything else, which is. Brief, but, you lost, but in the end, you still lost some mushrooms. So, you know. <laughs> you're really hey, about man. That, sir. I tried, yeah. To be honest, I feel like you lose the mushrooms too if you start choking on one, okay? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Yo, that, 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 that shit triggered me so hard. Yeah. That shit was so triggering. I was sitting here, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. <laughs> man, it, just choked on a mushroom. <laughs> Dude, those mushrooms in the dude, guys, you guys don't understand. Those mushrooms in his lungs, okay? That's crazy <laughs> dangerous. Okay. Like, she was give, going give for her kill, credit. honestly. It's yeah. like mold and shit. Kill you. Oh. The dumb thing about this is like class B has to resort to like willing to kill a person to win. <laughs> while class A is like restraining themselves the whole time. So like it's not even fair, right? Like imagine. Another Naruto reference, but imagine this is like Naruto versus Sasuke. Like Sasuke is fighting to kill, and Naruto is fighting to save. Like that's the handicap that they have. So it's really unfair. Like if they really wanted to, like the last fight, the the, the naval guy could have easily killed them all for laser beam. Like uh, Momo when she made her cannon. Remember they were like, oh, just yeah. blowing them all the way. Like Tokuyabi easily could have just strangled and killed everyone when he went to their <laughs> <laughs> right, and an invisible girl. I don't know if she really wanted to, she can go Assassin's Creed, pop up behind someone, just stab him in the back. Right, like <laughs> if she really I mean, wanted to, right? If, if class A really wanted to, they easily had to fight in the back in all the matches, but because they're mm-hmm. they're heroes and they're trying to like subdue their opponent, while class B is just saying, you know, fuck it, I'm going in, I'm going for the win. Like, it, it's it's not fair, so it, it's well, kind of hard to judge. And they referenced it this episode, too, and they were like, oh, Todoroki came in with just the ice. He could have come in with the fire, but, like, how yeah. do you control that more? So, right. so it's been a pretty consistent theme. Mm-hmm. The Invisible Girl just needs to come in with the Invisible Bat. <laughs> <laughs> people, people give her so much 
so much <laughs> shit, but I feel like her ability is actually pretty good. <laughs> like, being invisible uh, comes with a lot of perks. It's good that she just, like, just doesn't do anything. She hasn't been in a massive fight yet, I will always support... She never will be either. I will always support Solar Flare. Solar Flare will always be top tier. Like I was telling Brian earlier, right? I don't care if you're immortal. If you don't use it to its full potential, you're still useless. You could be an immortal stone just be laying there for thousands of years. Who cares if you're immortal? <laughs> if you don't do anything, that power doesn't do anything. You're still weak. You're still useless. So that's the invisible girl right there. She has so much potential, but because she wants to be a hero, she's useless, right? She should be a villain. Yeah, she should be a villain. She should be an assassin. Let's she go. should be like, you know, like she a top tier villain, honestly. Right, you know? So yeah. it's just, I don't know. Not everyone should be a hero. Just, just saying. <laughs> Not I, I agree. You know? <laughs> I do think sometimes when I watch these that like when I see these people with just absolutely ridiculous abilities I'm like okay fine I can see that like the author wants to get creative see like how you could make something powerful out of something that seems weak but sometimes I'm like would UA really accept them like we can barely get into like any colleges or something like here in the states <laughs> like, would UA be like the top tier this is the Hogwarts of superheroes are they really going to be accepting comic guy like I mean, hey man, as long as we're the boy, I think we're fine. There, there's the a drive, determination, and just how much you want to win, you know? <laughs> right? They, they That's why I, count, I guess. Mineta's there with his little great Oh, balls. God. Nope. <laughs> yeah. man, just, yeah. That's the drive. I has got to drive more than anyone else. For <laughs> 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 different reasons. I'm doing one of those TikTok top 10 most hated character PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> With certain sister and M Mina Tuz on our list, he's definitely on there. He's like, still, number one, he's such a good character. Mm -hmm. Agreed, yeah. he's enlightening so many people. <laughs> I mean, another highlight for me this episode, I couldn't help it, but when those two characters started speaking English, I was dying of laughter because all I could think about was David and him. My favorite. When I fast forward, to my that. favorite, yeah, when I fast forward. <laughs> I love it. I was dying so hard. I was like, "Oh man, David just loves this episode right now." Yeah, yeah. Like, I knew it was coming because, like, because cause the fucking transfer student. So I knew they were gonna put it somewhere. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for it, and then when I heard, it, I was like, "Okay, there it is. Fast forward, fast forward." <laughs> oh, I love this show so much. Yeah. Yeah. But again, everyone just, can go in a coma for about four yeah. weeks, like, and then we'll get to the good again, stuff. Again, I'm just as like a shonen, so I just. Waiting till, you know, till later. Although it's weird because all shonens have their lulls. It's weird because Hero Academia was like actually like it was the one of the exceptions where it didn't feel like it had the lull that other shonens did. It felt like you get consistent every week. It's like the first time it's happened, mm. so it it feels really weird. For so, sure. No, so, but just to remind that it's to me it's just, it's just a shonen, or it, I guess it's fell to the shonen tropes. So. Mm -hmm. So. Pretty frustrating when there's shows like Promise Neverland that just get completely like rewritten. The manga is already done, finished, pretty good, and they're just like, "Fuck the manga, we're just gonna go our own way." And then you have something like Hero, where it's like, I can't really imagine that anybody is like, "Man, this is my favorite arc." Like, I'm so yep. excited to see this. This contributes so much to the plot. <laughs> they still animate it frame they're for like, frame. <laughs> yeah, two episodes per fight. They're like, "We're going all in on this. We're doubling down for no reason, and everybody's gonna hate it." We're this. This is just showing us showing our dominancy over the show thing right now. Yeah, I got nothing more. Yeah, I actually have nothing to say in these. In the second, well, guys, so. next week, guys, next week is gonna pop off, right? We got Fire Blast coming from Todoroki, and then we got apparently Lita with his turbo mode enabled. So, and then we oh. have halftime, then yeah. we have the recap no. episode. You got to remember what happened in the first three fights, oh, yeah. God. Even though we get it every single episode, we get at the beginning, it's so like, annoying, yeah. yeah, it's getting bad, uh, but anyway. All right, yeah, that's we're, it. We're at, and all our sufferings here, and there for my academia. <laughs> so that's it and that's that's the end of our main show so open the floor everyone wants to give any shout outs uh cool i just wanted to bring one shout out for uh next uh next gen R uh, rpg full full dive. Dive rpg yeah because yeah, uh justin dropped it yep mm -hmm. uh he's out and then i was wondering uh i'm trying to i was trying to remember what happened this episode <laughs> to explain it to him but i, I couldn't remember Oh, so basically, uh, he's back in the game, and then he's trying to figure out uh, how to get back on track with the story. So he went to go back and talk to the uh, the other guy, the one that killed oh, him right. as well. 
bad day. Uh, uh, and, uh, and apparently he robbed them. So now he has some money. And then uh, he went to buy smoke bombs. And apparently the, the shopkeeper NPC was kind of a bitch. She kind of extorted money from the guy. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she's an NPC or not. So that's kind of weird because she's kind of, she has like a special model, I guess. She's, she's an idol slash shopkeep NPC. Hmm. So I'm not sure how that really works. Yeah, some bullshit, man. Yeah. And then at the very end, he goes back to the shed to get a sword because there was a sword there. And uh turns out that uh the girl, the the apple slicer from hell, uh was waiting for him the whole time. And apparently when she was gonna stab uh, the MC, uh the in- the interrogator came in to save him for some reason. And that's where it ended. Hmm. Uh yeah. so it's getting a little bit more interesting but uh i wouldn't say it's worth coming back yet got it yeah yeah it's uh yeah especially for like how much he he basically like got took all the dude's money via two smoke bombs and then none of them even came in handy because of course with smoke <laughs> he bombs, he had, yeah he needed a lighter and he didn't have one so he just threw it at him oh god yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty bad uh so, the, but... so again he's poor I mean, I don't know. He has a sword. He has a sword now. So once he, if he survives, and he's going to have another like party can, member. Apparently, can you use it though? I mean, come on. I mean, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. So if you guys like uh, like shonen shows, like uh, you know Dragon Ball, whatever, uh, I've been watching a a show called Dragon Quest Dies Big Adventure. You're apparently, it's a remake. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's actually a remake because apparently it. It aired like 10, 15 years ago, but this week's episode was like crazy good. Um, don't really want to get much into it, but there was a couple of crazy fight scenes. It's kind of when the MC like hits the pinnacle of his power and he's able to utilize his. It's been running for like a while though, hasn't it? Since like what fall or winter yeah it's a while yeah. back yeah, i think it's like episode 30 yeah. 32 right now or something like that so it's been ongoing but this episode is so good i recommend if you guys haven't watched like any of the dragon quest uh animes and you like shonen uh animes in general i like seriously want to say give it a watch it's uh, i think it would be like 52 53 episodes oh my god uh, but it's it's really good like it, it brings back all the old cliche tropes of like a shonen anime but it does it so well and like the animation is pretty good too, so uh, I would definitely recommend that if you have some time. Thing is, like I've, it's hard. It's always been hard for me to follow Dragon Quest stories, but I don't know. I'm, we'll see. I'm, I'm already with. I like Dragon Quest. I feel like I, you know, obviously like the Dragon Ball series and everything. It's the same author, right? Akira Tor- Toriyama, Toriyama also does the yep. Dragon. Yep. So Probably. for me, I feel like what I would think if I was to watch it is I would keep on thinking about, like, Dragon Ball, like, references or designs. Because doesn't the character kind of look like Goku? Or, like, I mean, a that's younger version design like in a general, Goku? So. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. So that's why it's, like, I'm kind of, like, stuck in this singular view. It's kind of like Fairy Actually, Tale and Eden Zero. Like, I would only, if I had, I would choose one. I wouldn't watch, like, everything because I'd be, like, everything's actually, the same. I don't Which, know. I don't I know. It. It's the okay, same I don't know but. if actually Toriyama did the manga, so I need to check on that. I think maybe he just did the character designs. I think he did the designs, but I don't think he actually I did the story. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I have a shout out, too, actually, if we're ready to move on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I watched, I caught up to Joran, Princess of Snow and Blood. And actually, it got pretty good. Like, I mean, at least as good as like half the shows that we're talking about each week, I would say. <laughs> um, it's definitely be- way better than Hero right now. And um... <laughs> okay, that's, that's what the bar you use. Okay. 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 I would say it's it's better than Bakuten, but less less good than like, and probably like on par with Two Year Eternity. So like. My biggest issue with it is mostly, like, stylistically, it's just a little bit different. I don't love the style. Some people might, but it's a bit different than what you might expect. Um, Additionally, like, it's just kind of confusing. They don't, I mean, and there's a lot of historical period political information going on, and they really do not spend any time explaining any of it to you at all. So there's, like, the subplots that all the characters are wanting to do, like, their own objectives, and that's pretty clear, you know, like, they explain that well, but it's just the period that they're in and how they're involved with the setting politically that's very confusing. So I've had to look up some background information. Which period is this, you know? Threaten. Help me out. What period is it? 
I don't. I don't remember. Is it okay? Never mind. Okay. I, I don't like, know. Shh, shh, maybe the Shogun. Like the bat, bat, like around that oh, time, maybe. Meiji. Yeah. Uh, Edel or Meiji? Okay. Yeah, I thought you said Meiji before. Meiji. Yeah. Um, Meiji's, Meiji's there. basically Ronin and Kenshin. Time, mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yep, that. So that got, got that that aspect was pretty confusing. But actually, the characters are like they've got a lot of dimensions. I've started to feel like emotionally attached to several of them. Like stuff's been happening in these past few episodes, and I would just recommend it. It's just a good anime and ge- like good, not great, but good. You know. Hmm. Well, Barrett. if I drop VB, I'll definitely give it a watch. <laughs> drop Don't VB, my God. Don't worry. We got we got better than Hero. That's I guess that's all we need. Hmm. <laughs> I have no other shout outs. That was it. Right. Did you uh, watch Shaman King this week, Sretton, or no? I did. What okay. did you think of this week's episode? Uh, I mean, the snow, I mean, the snowboarder person was, was, was that fine. Uh, as, okay. as much as you, I mean, it's, it's like typical kind of like, uh, you know, introduction of a, of a main character in the, in the, for the main party. Oh, okay. <laughs> His ability, uh, I mean, uh, interesting. Um, I also kind of the the part that I actually did laugh out loud was when uh, the that that guy's sister actually came by to to grab him, and he basically was just like like in a sense like j- just about to like like b- beating him up, and yeah. then and then Yo was just like, oh man, I feel you. <laughs> He's like, oh you too, because uh, uh, you know he just gets beat up by his future uh, wife as well. Future wife, the yeah. Yeah. They're both uh, ball and. To their, you know, respective others in that sense. Um, I watched it this week. I'm still keeping up with it, even though, you know, I watched the original series. For me, I felt like the fight wasn't as well done as it was done in the 2001 anime. Oh, really? I felt like there's a lot more style and grit that you just get from the older art style. And I feel like with the newer, more like clean and glossy art style, you don't really get that kind of feel. Oh, um, the other thing that I didn't yet check if it was in the original. But I swear in the new version for this week's episode, when uh, Horo Horo and Yo are back at his place, Yo's mm-hmm. straight wearing like a pot leaf on his t-shirt. And I was oh, just yeah. like, yeah. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Was this in the original? Like, there's no way. But it's just like a blatant like marijuana leaf. Like, I think they were trying to go for like a four leaf clover, but it just straight looks like a marijuana leaf. And it's funny because it's fitting for like Yo's personality. It's yeah, like, that's what I thought Hey too. man, peace yeah. and love, man. Spirit <laughs> King Yo. Hey, so, you, hey, you know. Don't you dare disrespect <laughs> my guy with the hippie. <laughs> Like uh, uh, the hippie personality, right? No, Yo man. has transcended past that mark. All right. <laughs> Do you know what he was wearing originally, Justin, or no? No, that's why I said oh, I have okay. to go back and look and like see if it was like twenty years ago. Similar. I know yeah. it would be crazy if it was like it would be crazy if it was twenty years ago and it was still a pot leaf. <laughs> hey, it might have been. It might have been. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I was just curious. Didn't no, have to go I, I mean, I still like I still like the show. It's more of like eh, just not much more to say besides you know a typical show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something you know just turn yeah. on and. Yeah, soak it in. It'll get more like when they actually start dropping more of the, the story. If I assume, yeah, yeah, I mean, a character episodes, introduction. Yeah, yeah. yeah, character introductions. There's only so much you can do. Mm. Agreed. Um, yeah, I'll just say I've yeah. really been continuing to enjoy the the Saints' magic powers, omnipotent. It's uh, starting to evolve into more stuff than just kind of like the you know, fun slice of life every day because now, you know, they're realizing that she is the sage and it's probably going to get pulled into, like, this one douche prince that is with the other <laughs> sage. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing that threw me off was I didn't expect the uh, the one, like, head of the mage group that made, uh, say, put the enchantments into the crystal. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to be Hawk's brother. So that was kind of weird where I'm just like, hmm. how many Hawks are there in this goddamn place? So... Hey, it's a pretty cool know. name, man. Maybe it's I an- guess. it's like the John of the old days, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or in your world, I don't know. I'm gonna catch up to that one tomorrow. I tried to catch up to it today, but ran out of time. Oh, it's all good. It's a show that obviously does need to be watched as soon as it comes out, but mm-hmm. it's a decent show, you know. Mm-hmm. They fit <laughs> their their niche well. It's a good vibe, yeah. Right, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, other than that. Well. All right, I guess that's a be it for this week's episode. So I want to thank yeah. everyone for joining us today. Thanks, thanks to everyone in the audience. Thanks, Tizzle. Thanks, uh, we got a new follower named Mrs. Dollar Power. Thank you. I want to thank oh, the thank audience or thanks, the guys. panel for joining this week. Thanks, guys. A lot of fun, even though oh, kind of no like we shit on some shows, but hey. Oh, I definitely yeah, went full ramble. So apologies. Yeah, I did that too. So. 
Oh, uh, Tizzle, you didn't miss much for the Overlord uh, reaction. Just giving you a heads up. <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, we're, we're excited, kind of fine with it, but uh, I don't know, but we were not too much of a fans of the third season. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm still going to watch it. But there it is. Yep. So That's we're it. it there. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. 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 Oh, next arc. Yeah. Next arc, best arc, I'll take it. Yep.